Electronic Music Podcast. All right. Well, um, here we are. This is it. VM Podcast episode number six with Sunshine Jones himself. Um, thank you all for tuning in here. Uh, we're, we're on uh, Instagram Live and um, YouTube and uh, at Halcyon in San Francisco, one of uh, San Francisco's best nightclubs. There's many, but this is, uh, this is one of them. And uh, we're, uh, we're here with Sunshine Jones, who um, I actually met at uh, the Midway when you were performing. Um, and uh, he's got uh, this crazy live setup with tons of synthesizers and drum machines and samplers and modular stuff. And, uh, you know, as a huge sound nerd myself, that uh, piqued my interest. So um, I thought he would be a fantastic guest here on the podcast. We can, we can nerd out a little bit. So uh, <laughs> thanks for coming on, man. Thanks for having me. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Uh, maybe we could just start with, uh, with your live setup. Uh, you know, because I remember when I, when I saw you there, you had, I think, uh, a Roland TR-8S maybe. Or, uh, and you had some modular, some, was it Dopafer? Um, you had, uh, see, I'm, I'm, <laughs> this is great. Keep going. Yeah, yeah. That's good. Um, Circlon? No, I don't think you had a Circlon. Anyway, why don't you, why don't you fill me on what you, what you have there in your live setup? Well, I'll tell you a story. Um, yeah. about three years ago, mm-hmm. I was leaving town. I was going to Joshua Tree and I was going to finish vocals and I put my German microphones and my laptop and my interface and all my cables and everything into um, the back of a rental car. Mm-hmm. And I'd gotten one of those sad sort of sound exchange royalty checks before I left <laughs> town, and I thought I should stop and stick that in the bank because yep. I don't know how long I'm going to be gone for sure, so why not just do it? So I go into Safeway, where the bank is, yeah. and I went in and I deposited the check, and I laughed with the teller about how small the check was. <laughs> And I got out to the car, and the back window was smashed, oh, and geez. my microphones and my laptop were gone. And on that laptop was my entire record collection, like all my music. I had a room full of record vinyl oh, that I had digitized through a preamp, mm-hmm. and like I gave the records away. I sent them to people. Like, here's some records. Like, there's a kid in Texas that got out of rehab. I was like, I'm scared to DJ, and I sent him 100 <laughs> records. Like, oh, wow. you can't tell that guy, oh, come my records back. Yeah, like, right. you can't do it. So I lost everything. And like, people were so shitty. They were like... That's why you back everything up. Like, people were really crummy. Nobody was, like, cool. And so I was really bummed. Somebody was cool. A friend of mine started a go... uh, GoFundMe. Yeah, I I don't think it was GoFundMe. It was something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he raised a little money, and it was really sweet. I was embarrassed that I even needed any help. And um, I realized that I couldn't replace my Macintosh with the money that we raised. And then I had to ask myself, like, because I was so depressed, so bummed. I didn't go. I didn't, there was no reason to go. Yeah. And I, in the middle of that, it was like, I was, I'd spent 10 years doing what I called a live DJ set. So I've got like a control surface and a laptop and my whole music collection and I'm singing and improvising and mixing. Because when I first figured out Tractor, it was really fun. Yeah. It was really fun because, like, you could re-edit music, like, in front of people. Right. And, like, who cares what you brought with you? Just make it up. Yeah, right. And then if somebody's, like, being a, a jerk, you can be like, don't be a jerk. Like, and that <laughs> becomes the song. And Weave everybody's like, the song, yeah. whoa, like, what's going on? <laughs> and then if you need to pull out a classic, you can just play the instrumental version of Do It Now or one of my oldies. And everybody's just like, whoa. Like, and it, it just like, stops the show. Right. But um, after 10 years of that, you start to feel like, you know, oh. I hate the future so much. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so, because it doesn't feel authentic, it doesn't feel real. Yeah. It feels like you're checking your email. It's right. not like the surprise 10 years later is not as surprising. Yeah. And so um, I had to ask myself, I really wanted to go back and do that again. And mm. I, no. No. I didn't want to do that again. Wasn't it? So yeah. I had to figure out what I wanted to do. Mm. And I asked myself, when was I last happy mm. and productive? And the answer was just like when I was playing live. Yeah. And the next thing I thought was, oh, I can't do that. Mm. 909s are like 3,000 bucks now. I can't, I can't buy any of that gear. Yeah. And um, so I wondered what I could buy. Right. And I looked around and Roland were making the TR8 and the TB3 and the mm. System 1. Mm-hmm. And um, Korg were making Volkas. Yep. And that was kind of all... and. That was all that was really going on. There was another whole substrate of interesting stuff happening, but I didn't actually know about it. Yeah. And so I bought the Roland things. I bought a couple of Volcas. I put them together, and I was just like, 
okay, this is good, this sucks, that's good. I wonder how that sounds in a club. And and so I like just sort of put it together and I wrote a set. Mm-hmm. And then Mark Farina, DJ Mark Farina and I did a show, a gallery show together at Lunaria and Gallery on 22nd of Valencia. Oh yeah, yeah. And Mark took the front room and I took these large situationist sort of juxtapositions yeah. and um, played my first live set in 10 years. Wow. I played completely live. I'd never played that music ever before. Holy cow. And it was amazing. Like I was, it's one of those things where you think like nobody's going to come. It's going to suck. It's going to be so lame. Yeah. And like, it was packed. Holy cow. And everybody <laughs> danced. Like the homeless guys that came in from the street to get the wine, yeah. they danced. They like were dancing. every, they were like the guys like, give me the microphone, give me the microphone. <laughs> I gave him the microphone. And he was like, I'm going to do that. You know, and it was so good. It was just dope. Uh, and like all my art sold. Yeah. Mark's, Incredible. Mark sold a few pieces. He was there. Yana was there. Marky Mark was there. Everybody was there. It was Holy fantastic. God. Wow. And it was like, this has to happen again. Because yeah. I hadn't had that much fun. I don't want to put down DJing. Mm-hmm. I love DJing. Yes. And nobody books me to DJ anymore now that I'm playing live again. Why would they? Yeah. And um, <clears throat> so, but for me, there's something about not knowing what's going to happen next. Yes. And not knowing... I forgot what happens. Like, you know, how does this piece of equipment even work? Kind like, of hoping that it does what you thought, think it does. And then it, <laughs> and then it doesn't. And, it doesn't. <laughs> and there's like 3,000 people around yeah, you. Yeah, right, right. It's pretty fun. It's yeah. pretty, pretty awesome. And yeah. so, and so, like, I decided to take that on tour. Hmm. And so what I took on tour with me was um, the TR8 stayed. Mm-hmm. I did get the TR8S. Yeah. But I actually traded it to Tobin Ellsworth. Oh, really? For his TR8, because I missed the TR8. The TR8S is a much better drum machine, and it does way more. It has killer trigger outs, and you can load samples in it. Yeah. But you have to do sub-menus. Oh. And I'm super one-knob per function. I'm, I'm, I'm the same way. Yeah, I don't yeah. want to press yeah. a modifier key and go through the other. No. I don't want, ever want to do that oh, again. Oh, that kind of kills the S for me. Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> Damn it. But I went back to the t- TR8, and I'm not sorry. I'm, I'm not sorry. Well, because live, yeah. it, like, yeah. it's just so much fun. It's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. It's fun. Remember fun? Fun, yes. Yeah. 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 And, That's and, why we all get started, right? <laughs> right. Well, some, some, some of us, of us yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so and so, uh, the TR8 is my, my sort of framework drum machine Mm -hmm. and then i have an octatrack which i use for samples and um sub sequences Mm -hmm. and then i got the boutique the roland boutique synths yeah i got the the first three the jx03 the jp08 and the j06 those are great they are great like everybody's oh i can hear the earlier thing those suck (laughs) like and they don't suck i had an ob6 and i brought it with me on tour in a club Mm -hmm. it sounds diabolical in a nightclub yeah. so you go to a nightclub you have this wonderful beautiful synth that makes you cry in the studio yeah. and you play a chord and it sucks up the bass and it sucks up the kick drum and you mm-hmm. can't hear anything but it wow. and so like if you're the keyboard player in a band that's a great analog synthesizer I don't want to like say bad things about it because I love Tom Oberheim and sure. Dave Smith's not a bad dude and, yeah. and Sequential's a great company Yeah, but it, it, I couldn't make it blend with my other equipment because I'm trying to do like I, you couldn't make what blend with the other equipment? The, the, OB6. The, 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 the original? Yeah. Wow, interesting. So the yeah. Roland Boutiques cut oh, and create a layer that I think when you're looking at the sort of three-dimensional depth of a sound, mm. um, they don't have that full dimension because they're yeah. digital. They're like plugins in a little box. Right. But, man, they sound great in a club. It's very controversial stuff you're saying here. <laughs> I know. I got the OB6 because I felt embarrassed. I've got these crappy yeah. little tiny things. And yeah. I sh- how embarrassing, right? No, I- I'm right there with you. I mean, because a lot of the- this old stuff. So I've been using, uh, I got this weird drum machine. I-, I probably talk about it too much. It's the uh, Yamaha SU700. Oh, yeah. It's a great yeah. drum machine. <laughs> it's amazing. Totally. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So it's the, the earlier generation. of the-, the RS7000 was the next one or whatever. It had more of a synth and stuff in it. Um, but the the SU seven hundred is just a special little, you know, redheaded stepchild of a of a, of a, of a drum sampler. But that's the best stuff. Yes. Well, and so my point was is a lot of this older stuff. It it, it almost is like it it has like a white noise element to it. 
Hmm. You know, and a lot of these older synths too, and, and a lot of older music was was a little bit more sparse, right? I mean, it's it had, you had less synthesizers. You didn't have a hundred plugins. You had one OB. You had one Moog. You had whatever, and and all of it was very rich and and sat together well. You know what I mean? Um, and and that's what I noticed using this uh, this uh, SU seven hundred is all the drums that and I use it almost exclusively now for my for my house tracks and stuff. Cause it just sounds okay. fantastic. That's it's crunch, great. Crunchy. It grooves. Nobody has one, which is what I love the most about it. Because, you know, my whole thing is I want to collect stuff that nobody else has. In a world where everyone's got, you know, uh, torrented free plugins and, you know, $60 or whatever, like affordable stuff. I want weird things. But the days of being able to show up with your laptop and then Mm. check your email in front of a bunch of people are very soon to be completely over. You think so? Yes. Yeah. Uh, What's next? What do you mean? Actual musical instruments. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. that's, I mean, we're, we're living in, an, I mean, this is the best time to be an it's electronic a, musician. Absolute renaissance right yeah. now. It's yeah. fantastic. Yeah, I mean, we're getting, we're getting hardware synths, we're getting samplers, we're getting drum machines, you know, uh, and re- renditions of older stuff, too. I mean, the, that's something I want to talk to you about, too, is like, you know, Behringer redoing a lot of these <laughs> old synths and just committing the cardinal sin of, you know, recreating the stuff that's already out of the, the copyright, you know, because it's been so long. I think it's wonderful. I think it's fantastic. And it's cheaper. It's a better price point. It's smaller. They have MIDI ins and outs, you know, where the previous models didn't. They've got newer technology that's not going to fail and cost you $1,000 to replace. So what do you think about them? That's what I would have told you um, a couple years ago. Yeah. I was pretty excited about the sort of democratizing force Mm -hmm. of the Roland boutiques. Yeah. And I felt like that's really amazing that you can get your your hands on a Juno 106 in a little tiny modern package right. for a couple hundred bucks. Throw it in a suitcase. That is so cool. And yeah. I do, and I bring them all over the world, and I love them. Mm-hmm. But the price went up to a thousand bucks, and now it's sitting around mm-hmm. six hundred. Yeah, it's not. That's not worth six hundred bucks. No. And, and it's never going to be. Yeah, the novelty of it is what it is, and so the the democratizing force of that is that it puts it into people's hands who don't have access to mm-hmm. the fact that a Juno 60 now is going for like 29, 2,900 bucks. Right. That is robbery. Yeah. In my opinion, that, that at best in pristine condition is a $500 synthesizer. Yeah. <laughs> and so for $2,900, if you're buying that, you better be a collector that's going to cherish it mm-hmm. and fix it and make it perfect and never play it because, right. because that's, you're stupid. Like yeah. that's ridiculous. Yeah. But then what are you going to get instead? And let me tell you, I was looking around. I, I searched Craigslist nationally. I do. And <laughs> I, I, I look for stuff like, and I just type in stuff. And yeah. I, there was a guy trying to sell a PV amp and an Alpha Juno 1. I've never really wanted an Alpha Juno 1 because they don't, it has the Alpha wheel to program it. That mm. doesn't have any knobs or sliders. Yeah, right. I didn't really know if it was analog or digital or what it was, mm. but I never wanted one. And I thought, well, I'll go check it out. Yeah. So I go look at his amp. He tells me all about his amp. And I'm like, listen, I don't really want the amp. I don't need an amp, but I'm really interested in the Juno. And he goes, 100 bucks. I'm like, sold. <laughs> and I give him the money. I bring the thing home. I clean it up. It's amazing. I love it. It makes the J06 seem like, oh, never mind. Like, it's so good. It's analog. Yeah. It's actually analog. It's incredible. It sounds so good. And I'm just totally crazy in love with it. And I think that um, with you layer it with the J06, actually gets even better. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so there's something going on there. And um, I bought a TR626. Mm -hmm. It's a much maligned, horrible beige little space console accessory. Interesting. Very difficult to use. Doesn't yeah. sound to have any good sounds on it. Is it what what is it? Is it a programmer that you plug into a synth? It's a drum it? machine. Oh it's a drum machine and stuff. Okay, yeah. Um you know the five oh five? Yes. It's that terrible eighties sound. Oh yeah. I had a five oh five in the eighties and I got beat up because yeah. people were like, get a real drummer and like <laughs> fuck you and they're like ah and then you're fighting after the show. <laughs> right. Like, yeah. And they're like, ah fucking kill you because I don't have a real drummer. Right, right. And so um and in the eighties, I was young and dumb yeah. enough to think, you know, the I'll, jokes on them now. I'll teach you something. The five hundred five is the sound now, you know. Like, Maybe. Well, six hundred six. All those, all those old school drum machines. Are... Man, but this is post nine hundred nine eight hundred eight six hundred six. This is oh, okay. into like sort of pink headband and oh yeah, unitard kind yeah, of. Yeah. Do, 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 do. It's kind of Rick Astley when, every, when everything was was can, a wash and reverb. Can you yeah. think of a five hundred five song that we should let the world know about? No. No. I, think, I think you hit it on the head with Rick Astley. I think we did, didn't yeah. we? That yeah, was yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> and we'll, so we'll rickroll everyone after that. It's <laughs> please. Yeah. And I think that um, so I got this thing and I started to use it, mm-hmm. and um, it it's awful how it works. <laughs> it's a wonderful programmer for other things so you can oh, trigger other things with it yeah and the midi uh you can just assign by pushing buttons and saying what number you want it to be hmm. so it's actually a really sick and convincing midi controller interesting so you have this great durable sort of kind of um roll and drum machine yeah. that can do whatever you want it to do wow and that's pretty far out and then wow. also this guy um harry axton in england figured out how to take the rom and reprogram it so that's in the mail. I haven't done it yeah. yet, but I'm gonna I'm gonna yeah, replace yeah. its ROM with um, Lindrum sounds and DMX wow. sounds. Yeah, yeah. So it'll actually sound good. Interesting. That's great. But this yeah. thing, this just looking at things like the Alpha Juno and the 626, the 80s synthesizers, they didn't have any character. Yeah. Made me wonder how stuff got done. Like, how did you work? So no computer, because I haven't touched a computer for musical purposes in years. Really? I'm just done with computers. I yeah, hate them. Yeah, yeah. And um, what are you using? Like a, a I'm using a TAC A1500 reel to reel. Nice. That's great. And uh, at my main sequencer is the Squart Pyramid. Yeah, yeah. Pyramids are great. Yeah. So how, how many tracks is the tape? Is it uh, four tracks? Stereo. Or? Stereo. Just stereo. Yeah. Wow. So you're just mixing it all on the fly. Uh huh. Crazy. That's awesome. You can edit it with a razor blade if you need to. Like, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's fine. I've done that once. Yeah. <laughs> only once. Only once. Why only once? That was in school. Okay. It was the only time you I had access to, right? to uh, tape. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun, though. Well, I mean, computers are good tape decks, too. So don't, yes. don't get me wrong. I'm right. just saying that relying on it as the centerpiece, yeah. I think, is, a, is... I was in... Um, where was I? I was in Victoria, Canada. I love Victoria, Canada. Oh, yeah. And I was at... Uh, and I was playing and these kids were just like you are fucking it up they were like totally into it young people that <laughs> yeah. like obviously didn't know who I was right. and um, I was just lost in my 303 and they were cheering and I like felt like my third eye opened and I um, had no idea that I'd closed it I was just like there's something about looking at the music that you're making mm. mm-hmm. as opposed to actually listening to the music that yeah, you're making right. that it, it's it's completely it changes everything everything it's it's, it's day and night yeah. that that's that's what i mean i i sat there and i would struggle with uh you know the drum rack in ableton or something and i've made some good tunes it's not impossible but the level of inspiration and the the threshold for getting to that inspiration is so much harder to find and get harder to get to just with the computer for me i'll speak for myself and i and i think you uh, I've, I've, uh, I find it with getting things. to things and working with things on the computer is actually really easy, and that's that's not the issue for me. It's it, what it is for me is is the visual element. Mm. I'm worried about whether my track is symmetrical. Yes, I'm worried about the colors I'm looking at, trimming the edges, and the, yeah, I'm not listening. Right, I'm looking. Yeah, and that's completely different. Yes, and and you find too, like when I use this uh, uh, Yamaha SU700. Uh, when you know when you use the pads, they're very immediate. They're very tactile, and I'm sitting there bouncing, and I'll lay a kick drum down, lay a little snare down, make some hi hats. It's got a nice roll button, you know, with the, the triplets and that sort of thing. And I and I realized that as I was tracking it from that into uh, Ableton, that you know, not all of my drum hits were complete. Some of them stopped short. Some of them went a little bit longer. Some of them were a little bit quieter. Some of them were louder. And that's the kind of stuff that you find when, when you just, you're just listening and, and it doesn't matter. All that stuff doesn't matter because what you're doing is you're grooving and you find the groove and finding the groove was, was getting lost in the, the perfection of the computer for me. And there's something about just sitting down in front of stuff instead of mm-hmm. being up with things. I, I yeah. don't know. Like, um, I got... Uh, MSQ100, which is like mm. the Juno 106 MIDI sequencer. It's like a multi-track. It's a little box, and it's um, it's nothing. Yeah. It it you program your little. It's like you're gonna tap out your whole song and then press play and <laughs> yeah. wait for the part where you sing. Like you're right. not you're not gonna do that. Yeah. So you make a little loop, or it can convert MIDI clock to DIN sync clock. Okay. And I was playing with it, just playing with it. Like, I got it for nothing. And so it was just like, let's see what this can do. And it, it really didn't do anything. And then I thought, but this is pretty fun hmm. to have a MIDI sequencer that yeah. steps sequences just, just like my analog sequencers do. Yeah. 
Um, is it like the QI, the Yamaha QI, like the little tiny synthesizer uh, sequencer thing? You know, it's like a doorstop. It's like a doorstop. Yeah, it really is. It's like a doorstop <laughs> painted like the Juno 106 right. is what it is. Yeah, and yeah. You, you've got a yellow button and a sky blue button. And yeah. it's, you're like, ugh. <laughs> I mean, everybody's got one, and they used it for years to convert MIDI to DIN sync, and then they didn't need DIN sync anymore. Now they don't know where they put it. Oh, interesting. But um, under the door. What, what I wondered was, how can you can you transpose this? Hmm. And so, because a lot of the way that I actually work is with like Eurorack and analog. So I'm hmm. really interested in CV gate sequencing. I'm interested in things like the precis precision adder. Hmm. So you make a brief sequence, but then you play it on another keyboard. So your sequence here is being transposed as you play. And so your song... Like, like an arpeggio? Like an arpeggio? Very, very similar to an arpeggio. The SH-101. Yeah. So if you, if you yeah, yeah. program a sequence in the SH-101 and you hit the key it goes to each key that... Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, to me, is really interesting because instead yeah. of saying, well, my song does this for 16 bars mm. and then does that for half a bar and then it does that and then it stops and then it does that for 16 bars again, mm -hmm. I don't want to think like that. I want to no. do it. Yeah. And so the whole idea is to actually imp improvise. Yes. And yeah. so how can you improvise with this MSQ100? Hmm. So I, I actually have a weird orange MIDI cable called the RK... Uh, is it RK? It is. RK002. Mm -hmm. It's made by Retro Kits. Mm -hmm. And they made it to... I got it because I wanted to be able to arpeggiate the boutiques. Yeah. And I found that I couldn't use it because I'm not going to switch my MIDI cable out in the middle of a oh, show. Yeah, like, no. oh, here comes the song with the arpeggiator. <laughs> Let's undo the MIDI. Like, I'm <laughs> yeah. never, no. never going to happen. No, yeah. And so um, <clears throat> I talked to them and I was like, well, is there, what do you think about turning this into a precision adder? And they're like, what do you mean? So I drew some diagrams of what I wanted to do with the MSQ100. And they were like, oh, that's easy. I'm like, well, if it's easy, do it. And they yeah. were like, they were like, okay. <laughs> so the guy did That's like great. the very next day. He was like, Holy try God. this, and I put it. As you just upload firmware into a MIDI cable. Interesting. And I so then I, and I plug it in, and yeah. with this dumb doorstop of a sequencer, I've turned it into basically an SH101 style sequencer. Holy cow! So I can take any MIDI synthesizer yeah. and treat it like an SH101. Wow! So you just go da da da, and then hit play, and it just loops da 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 da. Oh and my And then God. you can actually then play that on your controller keyboard. Interesting. And so I've been really thinking about deconstructing things that are really antiquated yeah yeah because i'm not going to take like my vintage synthesizers on the road with me no yeah but how did that work and how did those things happen mm, and yeah. then can we do it with modern equipment right because i don't want to take my sequencer and figure that out ahead of time i want to do it live yeah my whole thing has been to anything that can subsequence should sequence mm -hmm. the master right yeah. is the clock for everything. Yeah. And then it's... What do you mean subsequence? <clears throat> Sorry, just for people who might not know. Well, I'll explain. Like, so like a drum machine, right? Yeah. Is a subsequencer. Okay, because it's not the master clock. It's, it's being triggered by something that's the main sequencer. Exactly. But yeah. the way I start my show is I press play and it doesn't make any sound. And I go to the bass drum and I put in four kicks. Yeah. And I, the, I beat match the DJ and I mix that up. Oh, and then yeah. I put in the hi-hats and then I put in the claps and then maybe I add an effect, maybe I don't. Mm -hmm. And then maybe I add a, a tom pattern, but then I pull the volume down so nobody can hear it till it's time. Yeah. And then I bring in a simple bass yep. loop yep. that's coming from the squarp, because <laughs> that's the song, right? Those yeah. four notes are the song. Right. And then I'll slowly bring in other things and sort of mix it live on the fly. So it's never really the same twice. Right. And, but it's the song. I mean, I know my music. Yeah. And so it isn't like I can't play those four notes. Yeah, right. And I don't know when to stop. But like when to stop doesn't have to be 128. No. And stop for a count of 17 as a surprise and then start on 18. Right. That's not it. It's where are we and what's going on. Right. And how it's does a, everybody feel? Yeah. It's a, if you see people in a groove, they're dancing, you're like, okay, maybe this has gone on just the right amount of time. Let's, let's drop in some breakdown. And that could be... It could, it could have been 64 bars. It could have been 128 bars. Who knows? You know? Nobody's counting. Nobody's counting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that, you pick, or you pick up the mic and start singing, or you make up new words, or you add something else, or you do something you thought right. we're thinking of doing in the car. Yeah. And yeah. Um, you just improvise. Yeah, totally. And this, this business of figuring out at home and bringing mm -hmm. it to a club and then playing it mm -hmm. is heartbreaking. Because mm, yeah. it never sounds in a club like it sounds at home. Right. 
people don't ever do what you think they're going to. You've built the big build up with the huge breakdown, <laughs> yeah. right? And the amazing epic voice behind it. Yeah, right. They're going to love this. They're going to be like, wow, my God. Yeah. And when you do that, there's four people there and they go, and nobody, it doesn't go down the Checking way you want it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or they're filming you. Like, yeah. It's supposed oh, my to God. oh, my God. And so, like, the thing is to just be there. Yeah. And well, it does, it does command a little bit more attention, too, the, the live performance. I mean, it's, it's, it comes back to the whole, I mean, even if you have just one guy in a looper or, or your whole setup or a four-piece band, I mean, the, the, the thrill there, the, the attention is that something could fuck up at any moment. You know, so they could all fall apart at any moment. But th that's true with DJs, too. It is, yeah. Yeah. I Haven't you ever had a record go out? Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> 100%. Yeah. Especially when you're the big shot out of town oh, guest. My oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> the worst. So, I mean, it's really true for everything, but I agree there's something about, like, I really like putting my equipment in front. Yeah. And um, putting it at the dance floor level. Yeah. So that people... I like people to say, wow, check that gear out. But mm -hmm. what I really, really, really like is the person that's been there all day mm. and they're a little bit loaded yeah. and they're just <laughs> fucking having a great time. And then they realize that you're doing that. All live, yeah. And they want it, you're, sing, you're singing, you're like, you're actually singing. And they're like, excuse me, excuse me, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> It's great. It's awesome. It's just wonderful. Yeah. I just feel like I love you so much. Yeah. And I'm going to hug you as soon as I'm done singing. Exactly right, yeah. <laughs> because, oh, so good. I mean, however you blow people's minds, just blow it. Yeah, yeah, however you got to do it. And I, yeah. I, I feel like, you know, there are plenty of people that figure it out ahead of time and bring it to the club and mm -hmm. still give a great show. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, we just had uh, Mark Rabelais here at Halcyon. I, I don't know if you're familiar with him. I'm not. So he's he kind of a viral sensation right now. He uh, I mean, he does these silly, wacky songs. He's he's kind of one part Weird Al Yankovic, one part uh, you know, electronic musician. Is that the fuck Trump guy? Uh, maybe. Yeah, he sings about seeing girls' buttholes and stuff like that. Oh. It's, it's very. It might not be the fuck Trump guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It might be a different guy. It might be. Yeah, he's got really wild out there songs. You okay. know. But that's what's made him go viral. It might be why I haven't heard of him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we'll I'll link you later. But um, thanks. Yeah, <laughs> thanks a lot. Yeah, good. <laughs> it's captivating stuff. <laughs> but he's actually amazing. Well, he blew everybody's mind when he was here. Um, Don't link me. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so anyway, um, but he just he uses a uh, Boss five hundred five. Uh, Looper pedal or looper, you know, that's got the the big buttons on it. You know, right. kind of sits on the tabletop or that's what the fuck Trump feet. guy does. He's he's got to be the does same. Does he wear guy. glasses? Yes. Okay. With a, with like the kind of long hair. He yeah. did the fuck Trump song, and like a hundred people sent me that on Facebook. They're like, dude, it's just like you, and I'm yeah. like, that is not just like me. Thank you. I love you too. Don't yeah. ever send me that yeah. again. And like by the hundredth one, I was like, oh my god. Yeah. No, he has a total viral sensation. Totally viral. Right. Yeah. I mean, and he's riding the wave, and, right. and good for him. Good you know, for him. He's, and he's super nice. That's what super evil good Eddie guy. Richards told me in 1991. He said, "Mate, take the money and run." Take the money and run. I didn't know what he meant. I was like, I was like, what do you mean? You'll know when it, when it arrives. No, I, I didn't. <laughs> no, he didn't. Yeah, I had no idea. I was like, what the fuck? I'm doing it for the kids, man. I'm doing it for yeah. the people. Right. The music. <laughs> They're never gonna bail. It's great. This is why I love podcasts. They, they you never got, know where the, the and you just got to steer the ship. You know? I <laughs> love that the fuck Trump tie and the butthole guy are the yeah. same guy. That's it's amazing. The same guy. Yeah. He's fantastic. He's fantastic. I bet he is. He played here. Yeah, he played On here. This, right it here. Was a very, yes, right here. Damn. Yeah. It, it was a very different performance for Halcyon. I'll just say that. But we knew that going into it. Um, and it was a you know uh, a great move by uh, you know the, the 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 ladies that booked the you know the people here, mm -hmm. um, and uh, it, was, it was a different crowd. We were kind of prepared for it. You know, we, he does the kind of live performance thing. He has much less gear than you. He uses he the, uses the looper. He uses the looper. I actually, did not get the new Electro Harmonics five position looper because of the hundreds of videos that people sent me of that guy. It's a shame. I don't want to resemble him <laughs> in any way. Yeah. Well, I think you're uh, you're 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 doing. Fine oh, well, with your current setup. I'm a little older, but we do both have mustaches. You do both have mustaches. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> Buddy, keep doing what you're doing. It's fantastic. Don't stop. Don't stop. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I yeah. mean, I think that like... There's an audience for it, you know? Well, and be beyond that, the idea mm -hmm. is that like you can get a drum machine and a synthesizer mm -hmm. and you can make music and you should. Yes. 
And you don't have to wait for a record company to find you. You don't have to wait for Halcyon's booking agents to be like, well, that's a YouTube sensation. Let's bring him on board. Exactly. Yeah. Just start your own fucking party. Like, do yeah. it. Yeah. And every, I mean, because it's, it, right now you can get a synthesizer for a hundred bucks. Yeah. Right now you can get a drum machine for a hundred bucks. Right. Get one. Yeah. Do it. Program it. Yep. You don't need to study the nonsense I spew on Instagram mm -hmm. about the things I'm learning and discovering. I do that because I want to sabotage social media. Right. Because if I meet one more person that goes, oh my God, you guys, <laughs> like I'm going to scream. Why do you talk like a baby? Well, fucking speak like a human, speak in a complete sentence. Yes. Like open your Please. heart. Right. The world is full of people beating the shit out of each other until they're senseless with no emotions at all. And mm. that's what they like. Mm -hmm. And so like the world is really fucked up. Yeah. We need to speak our hearts, speak our minds, tell our truth. We need to learn how right. to disagree with each other. Yes. And that means like in the most healthy possible way, I want you and your drum machines versus me and my drum machines absolutely right here tonight the battle of the drum machines. yes man and i'm gonna hand you a mic and if you yeah. can't sing i win you know because i can fucking sing so exactly. like you know what i mean and, yeah, and yeah. if you really can sing then i'll start talking and i'll start sure. rhyming and i'll start thinking off the top of my head yeah and like yeah. i'll let the homeless guys come sing and right. like it's yeah. like it should be alive it, it should, should be happening right now there's should, so yeah. much fear yeah and fear right now seems to fucking win right and fear can't win no no. And like in San, I, I'm still here because yeah. I can't really believe that it, it's happening here. Mm -hmm. I can't believe what's happened to my hometown. Yeah, I'm pissed. And I'm, I, I wrote a song and I toured this material. I told, was telling you about the tour. Mm -hmm. I booked a three month tour. It lasted for almost two years. Holy cow! Too many gigs. It was great. It was yeah. really really fun. Yeah. But the whole time I'm singing this song cry and release where I'm singing it sounds like a, a woman has done me wrong but it's about San Francisco oh. and I'm raging at Ed Lee so I spent almost two years talking about what a fucking gold bricking piece of shit you know hypocrite motherfucker he is mm -hmm. right I was so mad it was so it felt so good <laughs> I did it at public works on in the main room and like people yeah. were like oh my god like no one could believe I was really saying you think that. they got it Yes, they spoke to me about it afterwards. Everybody oh. totally understood, especially in San Francisco. That's yeah. But people could feel, because that's happening everywhere. It is, yeah. yeah. And so, yeah. like, it was really be beautiful. But when I got home mm -hmm. from the tour, uh, Donald Trump was president, mm. and Ed Lee had dropped dead at Safeway. Holy cow. And so yeah. now it's time to record that song. Right. So I I'm not going to record a song, <laughs> what a hypocrite, gold-digging piece of shit the mayor is when he dropped dead at Safeway. I think uh, he got the worst end of that deal. I think he did too. Yeah. And so um, well, we'll see. We'll see, yeah. But um, I had to rethink the material. Mm. And I had to express it in a different way. And, and I decided that maybe it was okay if it sounded like a love song. Because hmm. it is. Yeah. Right. This is where I'm oh, from. That's the, that's the beauty of double entendres, right? Indeed. Yeah. <laughs> My poetic license is free. Yes. <laughs> so I can say whatever I want about San Francisco because I'm from here. I'm one of San Francisco's sons. Yeah. But if you say anything about him, I'd be pissed. Right. Right? That's the way it's like. Yeah. It's like Brooklyn or anywhere else. Yeah. It's, it's the place that made you. Yeah. So I can criticize it. It's always it. a pissing match. How long have you been here? You know? <laughs> like... <laughs> well, I'm, I'm older than you, and I was born here, so I win. Now you do, unfortunately. <laughs> and I'm from Walnut Creek, so. Hey, hey. the creek. The creek. All right. <laughs> what area code is that? I'm a fake. No. Uh, You're not a fake. No, You're the kidding. real thing. I know. Well, I, I, this place. I'm, more, I'm more real than, uh, than, than most people that are transplants here, you know, because I have been coming here since I was, you know, a kid. And but San Francisco is always cool. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, you know. There are like eight native San Franciscans, and I, I know, know seven yeah. of them, and none of us like each other. Right. right. Totally. <laughs> All butting heads. No, San Francisco's yeah. a place where, where, at least my experience with it is you grow up here, and, and you very soon realize that what's going on here is not for you. Yeah. So, like, the people in the 80s that were like, you know, oh, my God. Like, it wasn't what they were experiencing was really awesome for them. You know, mm -hmm. They got a job working for Bank America, and they were going to work in the Transamerica pyramid. Right. I was never going to do that. No. Yeah. I, Even if I got a job at Bank of America. Yeah. They would never give me an office <laughs> in the Transamerica pyramid. Like that's just not what's happening for me. Yeah. And yeah. so uh, you you end up living in the lower hate and wondering what being a native entitles you to. Mm. And the answer right. the answer is nothing. Nothing. What yeah. did you buy? That's what it entitles you to. And that yeah. sucks. Yeah. Because, like, San Francisco was great. Like, and it's weird to be, like, an anti-capitalist and feel like after mm. the earthquake. Yeah. When we had, like, a 90% corporate vacancy in San Francisco. Oh, yeah. Those were rich 
fertile, wonderful days. Yeah. Like you could just stay like, could we throw a party here? And the real estate agent is like desperate. And they're like, yes. Yeah. And you get like the best party in the weirdest place. And it's so much fun. Yeah. And now, no, you can't. Right. It's weird that, uh, that you know, world, of, you know, tragic events like that sometimes make things better in some way. I mean, so it was like uh, one of my favorite uh, podcasts is Joe Rogan. And he always talks about how when, uh, you know, after 9-11, um, how it was one of the best times to be in New York because everybody was was so brought together by this by this tragic event. You know, the sure. firemen and the policemen, and nobody hated the cops. You know, it was right. like the cops are doing this this crazy thing and giving their lives and stuff. And um, yeah, I mean, it's it's not surprising. That you know? was true here after the '89 quake. Like, there was a whole lot of "Where were you? Mm-hmm. Are you okay? Is everything all right?" Yes. There was a lot yeah, of yeah. sort of, but there was a lot of that anyway. Here, yeah. it was more so, and it sort of transcended many of the sort of self-imposed divisions. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But what I mean is a sort of further reaching fallout because as soon as we had an earthquake, a real earthquake, the thing everybody says is going to happen. It's going to happen. The big one's coming. And that wasn't even the big one. No. And it like knocked down the bridge and <sighs> tore down the marina and like put the place in shambles. It was wild. Yeah. It, amazing. Amazing yeah. that that yeah. little ooga ooga like did all that damage. Right. Um, it was like an 8.2 or something, right? Well, where I was staying in the street and I watched the cars bounce up and down, I thought it was funny until I saw the smoke rising. And then I was like, "Uh uh-oh, maybe that's not funny. (laughs) But I know other people who were in side buildings that everything fell on them. And so that's a really different experience. It just depends on where you are. Yeah. But um, after that, Mm -hmm. the Bank of America moved to Texas and everybody got a U-Haul and moved east. Like it was like they left. Just because of the quake. That's scary. Yeah. (laughs) It's really... (laughs) It is, but I mean, I guess I just feel like Maybe you would hedge your bets on the fact that it happens once every right. But I think 30, after years, after you, you know? finally experienced the like, if you're from the Midwest or you're from the East mm. Coast and you finally heard it's about earthquakes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you don't care <laughs> yeah. if it's not going to happen for another you forty your first, years. You're out of here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if I got my first tornado in the Midwest or something, I'd be totally. And they're like <laughs> laughing at you because you're like, "What do we do?" And they're like, "Ah, you're an idiot. Like, just look at it. <laughs> They're just look at it. It's yeah. not coming. Just get in the basement. <laughs> <laughs> you close the door." No. <laughs> Oh, that's great. Um, yeah, well, uh, shit, you, you've already blown through a lot of my, uh, my my kind of prepared questions for you. Did I? Yeah. I blew through them. Yeah, well, I mean, just talking about all the sequencers and stuff. Oh, uh, right. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's fantastic. Let me see. Um, I asked you about the uh, the Behringer stuff. Um, we, did, we didn't really talk. I don't really I actually have a lot of positive things to say about the Behringer stuff. No? What do you, what do you think? Well, I want to be excited about anything yeah um i do yeah i also i make love letters and i do um instructional and i also do my own personal exploration as transparently as i can Mm -hmm. all in the service of my own art Mm. but it's also in service of teaching people i really want to help i want to inspire people to do it themselves right Right. and that's the most maybe the second most important thing getting my own Mm. artwork out yeah is first yeah but then helping you at least get excited about doing that for yourself is definitely second. Yeah. And then absolutely. and then maybe moving the crowd and, and then maybe selling some records. Yeah. But the idea is that um, I support anybody doing almost anything. Hmm. I think that I'm bored by people that use their position as a means of um, commercially promoting stuff. Hmm. I would never do that. I've never taken money or stuff. Um, but I think that um, Behringer are interesting because they seem like such renegades and they're going to hijack the system and they're going to do this thing and they're going to remake the SH... No, no, the, the Juno 106. Yes. Yeah. That's, <clears throat> there are some people that like that synthesizer, but when mm. I finally heard it, I was like, I didn't care. Mm. It mm-hmm. was so far from the point. If you're going to knock off a Juno 106, knock it off. Yeah. Like, right. knock it off and nail it. Yeah. Right? Right. And then people can be like, oh, man. Blah, blah, blah. But, I mean, you've got a Juno 106 for 200 bucks, and yeah. so you rule. Yeah. <laughs> right? That's the democratizing force of that. And right. they failed. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think the same is true and going to prove to be true with the SH-101. Mm-hmm. I love the SH-101. Like, that's mm-hmm. my all-time favorite synthesizer. It's a fantastic sound. It's yeah. just the best thing ever. Yeah. I love it. The, the guy that I bought my SU-700 from had an SH-101, and he wanted me to buy it. And I wanted to buy it what so he, badly. What but, was he selling it for? 
Oh, I think 500 bucks. Dude, are you stupid? I, what fucking get I, it and I sell had, it to me? I had $200. Oh! <laughs> and that's what I paid for my SE700. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was, but, yeah. But you see what I'm saying? I mean, I'm talking about people that only have $200. Yes, and, exactly. And I want you to make music. We need it you to make music. We want to hear what you have to say. We need you so bad. Yeah. And right. beyond, I mean, forget style, right? There's yeah. a lot we could say about style. Yeah. But Behringer remade the chips. Mm. to knock off the SH-101. They bragged about it. They were just like, you know, you know, it's a Roland. Yeah. And the whole thing is that, like, it doesn't sound very good. Mm. Yeah. Now, maybe they said, okay, we're going to refine it. We're going to get it dial and get some things going. It sounds bad. Yeah. I, I mean, I can't say I've heard one in person yet. I haven't either. I've yeah. only seen videos of people that have the prototypes. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and why is the pitch wheel transparent and disco yeah it's a new thing it's make a black one right <laughs> right and don't put the dumb cord buttons across the middle of it no no little tiny silver ones and as few of them yeah. as possible they're trying to do the dave smith thing with don't the, the transparent. don't do that yeah. make an sh101 yeah, exactly. and make it 200 bucks yeah and like you don't need to reinvent it or add no. any disco to it it doesn't need to look like it's from rotterdam right just make an sh101 yeah, maybe add bucks. some midi and call it a day Thank you. Yeah. And even it could even be the mini jack midi that sure. pisses everybody off. That'd I be hate, fine. I hate, the mini jack I hate that too. But I'm I'm just saying that'd be okay. Yeah. Like I wouldn't be like, why'd you put that stupid midi on it? Right. Like just do it. Do it right. Now yeah. now I will say the Pro One, mm -hmm. they're coming out with the Pro One clone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That looks pretty good. Right. It really does. Yeah. I just know they're gonna fuck it up. Yeah. They're gonna do something. They're gonna put blue mm -hmm. buttons on it or they're gonna they're gonna make it so the sequencer, you know, it's just <laughs> oh, it's going to flash yellow or something like it's something right. stupid is going to happen. This is funny because your 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 uh your gripes about them are so different than most people. <laughs> but I love it cuz it's refreshing. It's different. Most people are just mad that they're they're doing it at all, you know, that they're Oh, no, know, fuck that. I mean I'm in, yeah. I'm I'm in love with Eurorack and yeah. Eurorack is wouldn't exist if it weren't for people making knocking off Bukla and right. the system 500 and the system 100. Yeah. Like wouldn't yeah. exist at all. Yeah. And dope for wouldn't exist. Like yeah. that's the whole thing. Is like this is a beautiful circuit. Right. And so reproduce the circuit and do it faithfully. If you can, use the mm -hmm. original components and let's hear it. Yeah, right. Right? I mean, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Make an SH101, like kill it. The SH01A is just marauded by people. <laughs> that thing sounds fantastic. You right. bring it out to it, it's an SH-101. It's dope. Right, right. The SEO2 done with Studio Electronics, mm -hmm. that thing is fucking sick. It sounds good. It's like a mini Moog. It's yeah. so good. <laughs> yeah. And like people are just like, oh, it's fucking stupid. Yeah. It's analog. There's right. nothing stupid about it. It's a little small. Sure, yeah. So if you're a big guy mini keys, mini or you're a large yeah. woman yeah. And, 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 and you're having trouble with the small knobs, yeah, I can understand that, and yeah. I think that's a valid complaint. I, I feel sorry that you have big hands. Well, yeah. and I would also <laughs> encourage perhaps a larger format version of the Bluetooth. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. That could be fun, too. Yeah. But to knock up, you know, to be angry mm. about an analog, a brand new three oscillator analog monosynth produced by a company that knows what they're doing, you know, for under 500 bucks... It seems like there's not a lot to be upset about. And people are very upset. And people are very upset. Yeah, very upset. Yeah. That's, that's fucking stupid. I had to, I had to <laughs> temporarily mute uh, synthesizer freaks on Facebook <laughs> because it was every post. Every single post was talking about Yuli Behringer and all but, their knockoffs. But, I mean, I've sat with the Mini Moog and had the uh, SEO2 next to it. And, yeah. and to be honest with you, the, S the Mini Moog kills it. Yeah, oh, yeah. Like the SEO2, you just kind of like... Just one finger on the mini moot. And yeah. you, you just take the SEO2 and you just huck it. <laughs> like, who cares? Like, I've never saw that before. I've never played Skip that it across the lake. Yeah. <laughs> I have this now. Right. And like, so like, I'm, I, I think that to say, if you were comparing mm. my $300 tiny black synthesizer <laughs> to a mini moog, it's, it's, not, it's like a grown man picking a fight with a seven year old. Yeah, it's, it's not, not a, fair. It's not a good fight because there's not a good uh, comparison because one costs a fraction of the price one is you know uh, intended on something different there's just so much negativity yeah in music right especially with equipment and i think that it's it's a lot of things involved in that negativity and some of that is that i mean a lot of people have worked really hard to restore vintage equipment mm -hmm. and they've worked really hard to collect it and preserve it right. and covet it and love it and learn all they can about it and they want 
to teach people about it and bless their hearts. We wouldn't be anywhere without them. We I need to, them. I had to replace the encoders on my SE700. And right. somebody had to hook you up to tell you what kind yes. of encoders. That's exactly and what I'm talking about. And then I made about. another whole forum post that went even into further depth and had photos and all that stuff. Thank you. You know, doing my part. And so yeah. that's the whole thing is, is that this spirit of your information is a threat to my information. Right. Your experience and what you're doing is in some way diminishing or taking away from my experience. Your now, opinion. Now that they're, no. well, that's the modern age, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But the, th this idea that, that my toy that makes a cool sound mm. and thrills me endlessly right. makes you with your expensive piece of equipment that um, maybe not a whole lot of people want to come see you make any sound with. Like, there's more going on there than is this piece of gear good? Yeah, or, right. Or is it bad? Almost like they're threatened because this new thing well, is doing the same. Well, who wouldn't be? Yeah. But if there were another podcast going on right over there and they were younger and more attractive and richer. I'd be livid. Wouldn't you be mad? I'd be mad. We'd have to like <laughs> be like, you dumb, stupid. <laughs> like, so, you know, we have to do that. Like You're all knockoffs. <laughs> It's 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 the dark haired people versus the blonde haired people. Right. It's dumb. Tribal. People are just tribal. We are tribal. Yeah. And so what I'm trying to do is I mean, I love analog. I love modular. I love the truth. Yes. I also really love the democrat demo I can't even say it. Yeah. I, I love it so much. Yeah. <laughs> I really love the democratizing force of modern equipment. Mm. Because what happens is if you get uh, JX03 in the hands of somebody named Pete who lives in Las Vegas mm -hmm. and he likes electronica and he really wants to make some of that electronica and so you get him that and he plays with it for a day and it, the next question is what else should I get and you get him a TR09 mm -hmm. And so now he's got a JX03 and a TR09, and he's going. This resonance. He is delighted beyond belief. He has a boner, and he doesn't know what he's doing, and he's so excited. It's so great. It sounds awful. And nobody has a heart to say, Pete, 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 turn that off. Like they're just really excited that Pete's found an outlet. Dial the resonance back a little bit. Now, what should I get? Pete wants to know. And so eventually, Pete is Peter. Eventually, hmm. Peter has written an album. He's evolved. Eventually, Peter has all grown up with a real keyboard in front of him, and he's helping somebody else the way we helped him. So if we picked on him and called him stupid and told him to shut up, yeah. then that's what we've created. Dream killers. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Don't kill anybody's dream. That doesn't no. mean everybody's a snowflake. Everybody's music. Yeah. Pete sucked when he started. Yeah, of course. He just we all did. did. Everybody does. I did. Yeah. You should have heard me in 1986 in my closet with my Korg. And Many my, painful oh years. Oh, my God. Many painful years. So bad. A decade for oh. me. <laughs> a painful decade. The thing too is you feel like you have, you feel like you're so good at the time. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm talking you about. You feel like you're but so good. That's the thing is, is that, is that what begins with a toy mm. becomes a career. Yeah. And right. I think that nobody, I mean, I am touring the country with some very expensive, beautiful analog equipment mm -hmm. and a, bo a case full of toys right. and what I'm trying to prove is that w the best synthesizer in the world is the one that's right in front of you mm. you don't need a million dollars Yeah, what you need is to do it the people that wait for XYZ thing that oh, I need shit. before they even get started well that's like if I only had a booking right. agent I'd have all these gigs I'd have oh, so many gigs yeah. if I had a booking agent if you had a booking agent they would put your name in a list of names on their website no one would notice your name and you mm. wouldn't get any bookings and then you'd be mad at your booking agent for sucking Right. that is not the way it works no. you no. play a great show mm. and, and then play another great show mm. so to prove it wasn't a fluke sure. and then play a series of great shows and get some people that want to come see you Yeah. And or, or play, play a series of mediocre shows and then eventually they get great and then yes you know, well of course yeah. but i mean what the the great show i meant in the first place was yeah, yeah. after oh yeah, after all five years struggle. of, of yes. opening <laughs> and being yeah. terrible yeah. yeah not understanding why you can't mix breaks into house yeah oh my god yeah but i can it i do right yeah i have you have have you impressive uh i've i've mixed uh house into drum and bass i have a technique for that what is that technique um, so using tractor, you can. Oh, yeah. see, tractor. It's controversial. It's like the JX03. It's, <laughs> it's it's digital. It's not real. It's garbage. Yeah, <laughs> just fake. I like to. I'll, I'll. You know. I mean. I'm not even gonna listen. <laughs> <laughs> la 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 la. 
Well, no, uh, what's and, the technique? And, and, I do want to know. An argument for the sync, the sync button, right? Everyone hates the sync button. Probably the most controversial thing in DJ. I've had people come lay their head on the table where my control surface was and stare the whole set <laughs> no. to see if I touched the sync oh, button. No. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's terrible. And when I didn't and the set was over, you know what they did? They went, respect. 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 Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what? I felt like a million bucks. Right. I don't know who that person was and I don't know what they were hoping for, yeah. but I felt like, like I won. And even though your, 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 whole, your whole impressive <laughs> setup it's, it's essentially MIDI clock together, which is one giant Oh, no, 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 no. That was a, this was a DJ set. <laughs> this was a DJ right, set. Right, yeah, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. So my trick is... That's uh, funny. That's yeah. really funny. <laughs> MIDI <laughs> clock. MIDI clock is one big sync button. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, your set was great, man, but you used MIDI clock. Yeah. It's lame. <laughs> lame. If you were a real DJ, you would, uh, well, would beat match all of those drum machines there together. There is a real art to beat matching. That's sure, why I yes, wanted to know is. your technique for mixing yes. drum and bass seven, yeah. eight time into four, four time. Well, it's very difficult. It's very difficult without the sync button. But if you have the sync button, you wait for the end of your house song. Okay. You hit on a four, eight bar loop. Okay. The two tracks are synced together. You start off with the, uh, let me see if I can remember this correctly. You start off with the house track on the left, let's say, at 128, whatever, and you're, yeah, and you're- That's a little slower, that's but- That's a little slower. Yeah. <laughs> it's like 125. And your, uh, your, your drum and bass track is, is <laughs> the, fader, <laughs> the fader's all the way down, so it's as slow as it can go, right? Okay. And it, but they're synced, so maybe your, your, your drum and bass track is now at 128. So then when they're synced, you're fading, you're cross-fading from one, the house song to the drum and bass song, while you're also pitching up so you get the drum pattern sinks, uh, stays synced and speeds up. Can you do a cutaway right now and yeah. show us that, like a close-up of that for the podcast? Maybe. Okay. <laughs> I'll make another video I on it. I love that. I want to see that. That's yeah. really sick. I yeah. played, a DJ Rap played before me at Even Further. Mm -hmm. The sun is rising. I'm supposed to play at sunrise and it's already rising. Oh and God. I'm set up and I'm ready to go. And my equipment is rattling off the table because she's going, you know, <laughs> Like it's crazy what she's doing is great. Yeah. And um she's going, Are you ready? Are you ready? My equipment is like coming off the table and I'm trying to go <laughs> back to the to the one. You know, You're that's right. the best I could do. And she she can't hear it. So she's shouting, Are you fucking ready? And I'm like, I'm ready. And she's like, What? I'm like, I'm ready. She's like, What? And she's like, I'm ready. And like, boom, it goes out and I'm just going, ooh. Ooh, ooh. With my finger and the, the audience is like, drum. what the fuck happened? Yeah. And I pressed play and it dropped by like, you know, 30 BPM. Oh, no. <laughs> and it was great. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. epic show. Sometimes you just got to kick people in the balls. Yeah. fucking do it. Yeah. <laughs> just press play. You weren't ready for that. <laughs> I'll never That's ever awesome. forget that. Yeah. And yeah. I'll always love DJ rap for that magic moment. Absolutely. It was like in the pouring rain in Wisconsin. Oh my God. It was amazing. I'm always impressed by the sets that, that push on through the rain. That's like, that's a heralding experience. It, have you heard of the festival even further? No. Kurt and Woody. Oh, yeah, okay. Good people, man. You got to check it out. Yeah. You ever want your mind turned inside out and your life changed forever. Holy cow. Even further. All right. Yeah, I'm a big, big festival guy myself. <laughs> I got out of the car and was like tired from this big, long drive. And the first thing I did was slip in the mud and slide down the hill. Oh, my God. It was just the beginning. It was really something. It was amazing. It reminds me of the uh, the, the the photos and the stories of the um, what were the what were the the festivals that had the wall of sound? Was it Woodstock? And, and it would rain, and they had like amplifiers with like hundred thousand watts, and you know just walls of amplifiers, and it's raining. And I just remember reading stories about guys that were like uh, was the sketchiest thing I've ever done. You could have easily you know two things you know got wet, and you could have just started you know. Wow. Yeah. I, don't know. I didn't realize that Woodstock was a treacherous experience. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the whole, with all those amps and all that wattage, it's, it's right. gnarly, yeah. And all those hippies. All those hippies. <laughs> all that brown acid in the rain. <laughs> I don't know. No. Sean Anna played at Woodstock. Can you believe that? Holy cow. They were like, do, 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 do. <laughs> like at Woodstock. Wow. That's totally weird. Yeah, it is weird. Yeah. Like, why did they book them? I'm sure they had an audience. Of, they, they, no? I mean, I don't know. Maybe they thought... The Jimi Hendrix and The Who. Yeah, yeah. And Sean and yeah, Maybe people needed a break. <laughs> Jimi Hendrix. Maybe we don't understand Shrank. something that's really psychedelic about Sean <laughs> yeah, and Probably. probably. It's you're, not, you're not on enough acid. That's what it is. 
Have you ever seen that TV show? No. Kids at home, go to YouTube and look up Sha Na Na and then check out some Woodstock and be like, what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I'm definitely going to look it up. Please do. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah. Well, um, we were talking about the irony of um, the negativity in electronic music. Yes. And yeah. I think that wherever you get into gizmos and widgets mm -hmm. and engine size and, you know, where you're going to have a certain amount of opinion. Right. Uh, uh, sometimes those are categorical. Sometimes they're educational. Sometimes they're authoritative. Sometimes they're, um, sometimes they're right. Yeah. Right. I mean, sometimes a shitty piece of equipment is just yeah. the best tool for the job, you Absolutely. know? Yeah. That, that's, I think, ultimately why the philosophy ends up being the best synth is the one in front of you. Right. Because as you grow, as you evolve, you become able to actually accomplish things that you really want to do. And, mm -hmm. and doing them poorly is a great way to ask good questions about how to do them well. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, it just takes time. And we yeah. don't really live in a world where things like love doesn't even get to bloom. Right. You know, you just fucking swipe right, oh man. Oh, my God, yeah. Seriously. She's a fatty. Yeah, out of here. <laughs> you know, and like... Who are you? What do you think? Are right. you smart? Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. and, 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 and I don't know. I really feel like um, we're living like it's a Frappuccino, and it's really not a Frappuccino, mm -hmm. man. It's the microwave uh, generation. Well, is it the microwave generation? Is it the generation? I don't think. My grandma uh -huh. is just like, what the fuck? Your you grandma's know? swiping. Well, they're everybody swiping. <laughs> you go outside. Like, everybody outside right now is <laughs> going, oh, look at my phone. Swiping. Far yeah. out. Yeah. Like, you know. And so, like, that's cool, I guess. Yeah. You know, it's just utility. Yeah, right. And so I think rather than saying that, you kids shouldn't be doing that. Yeah, right. It's more like. Get off my lawn. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Get out of my yard. <laughs> I, I, I really feel like what's happening here is that, is that just be where you are. Right. And if you need to talk on the phone, like, think about people. Nobody calls uh, anybody anymore. Do you answer the phone? Yeah, I do. Not if I don't know the number. So you don't always answer the well, phone? Well, I get a lot of spam calls. Uh-huh. We all do. Yeah. They got our number somehow. The do not call list doesn't matter anymore. True. Yeah, it doesn't. Where's George W. Bush when you need him? <laughs> um, did you get any spam calls when he was president? Like the Gerber grow up plan where they calling you? I don't know. The special it? order to check for you for a male enhancement product? <laughs> like you're getting those phone calls, were you? Right. It's been more lately. It's been more within the last five, five years, for sure. A lot of them. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, a lot of people I know are either mad at me because hmm. I don't ever answer my phone. Hmm. My phone is always on silent, and it's always in my pocket. Mm -hmm. And that sucks because it's my doorbell. Oh, yeah. So you're outside, <laughs> and I don't know you're there. And I you're doing the only thing you can do, which is right. to call me. Yeah. And, and you have your headphones on. I've just got my face in my Euro rack. Yeah, and I'm yeah, like, yeah. look, that shit is stereo, man. And like, I have no idea you're there. It sucks. <laughs> Phone's sadly ringing off in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> or I have people that are like, you know, texting is hard. Oh, wow. I don't want to text. Could you please call me? Oh, my God. And I never called them. Yeah. Like, love is on the other end and they want to talk. Right. Why do, you, why do you do that? I want to text. You want to text? Yeah. Interesting. Because I like the desynchronous of communication in that sense, in that, like, hmm. I could text, I sent you an email yeah. that said, I'm out front. Oh, okay. And did you get it? No. And yet, here I am. <laughs> it worked Isn't out. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> like, wow. Like, you know what I mean? And yeah. you got to do what you needed to do, and then think, I wonder yeah. if he's here, and then you went and you looked, and yeah. there I was, and the right. sending that message was really just to kind of make me feel better. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Not at all. No. And so, like, if you text me, hey, are you hungry? And I get it in three days. Mm. And I write back, dude, I'm fucking starving. <laughs> right? Then you look like, and you laugh and you go, fucking me too. And then we go to dinner. <laughs> right. Like, you know, it's like, it's, it's not aim. I get you. We're uh, not yeah. having a real-time chat. Yeah, right, right. I like that. Yeah, I like that too. The, the desynchronization. Yeah, it kind of, it, there's some, it lets you think a little bit you can process things and kind of make uh you know for better or for worse right you can make uh, make up your mind before you speak you know but it changes things and i think that comes back to you know the the the, the uh aggression online with various senses and stuff we've you come did full that circle really well you really did a good job i like what you did there that's yeah. really cool because yeah. everybody is a keyboard warrior now you yeah. know and you have this opinion about this thing this synth or you feel you know um uh upset that someone's got this new, you know, tiny, cheaper version of what you've got. And, uh, 
they get online and everyone just, I, I think, so I found myself doing this a number of years ago, probably 10 years ago now, but I had this job that I didn't really like and I was working long hours and I had a big commute, one hour each way, right? And so I'd get there at work and there was a lot of time in the middle of things where there was nothing going on. So I would just be on the, on, online. And I found myself just getting on this car form. I'm into cars. So I'd get on this car form and we'd be talking about cars and I would just be shitting on people because I was, I was, I felt passionate about my car and, the, and my opinion on this car, right? What kind of car was it? That's a Subaru. I'm a Subaru guy. So you thought like somebody that thought that they're like Hyundai, like refrigerator model was like mm -hmm. a bitchin' car. You were like, you're Basically. a fucking stupid idiot. <laughs> stupid head. That's what you were doing Basically. with people. Basically, yeah. Wow. Yeah. But I looked inside and I realized <laughs> that it was because I wasn't happy <laughs> with my life. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that's amazing i uh, could i tell you that my respect and my admiration and my love for you has just like exploded that's like amazing. all the roses in the Thank world you. right now like that you are blowing my mind <laughs> a former hater ladies and gentlemen a what happened? reformed hater. are we no longer live what what did your phone go to sleep what happened that's instagram it, it, it turns into a potato after an hour <laughs> okay the, the rest of it's still going. Okay. It's just incredible. <laughs> so how in the hell did you stop telling the poor Hyundai refrigerator drivers that they were worthless pieces of shit? Well, I just, uh, I just, I just manned up and stopped. Yeah. You know, I realized I was being aggressive for no reason. And I realized that I was not happy with where I was. And so I was just getting online and just taking it out on people. Right. And I think that's the problem you see with, Facebook especially, Facebook especially, and forums, you know, music forums, car forums, whatever it is. I mean, it's all the you know, ends of the earth that people are getting wild on. Um, so, like, but, there's so much no, yeah. and there's so much yeah, but. Right. It's like we're human algorithms. Yeah. Like, if you like the Hyundai, you're really going to like a Subaru. Yeah. If you Let like that you rolling thing, that, you don't know anything about synthesizers. Like, yeah. it's like, yeah. it's, it's, we're all salespeople. Right. And to my mind, it's like, Say yes. Yeah. Start saying yes. Like, yeah. take your inspiration from what inspires you and be inspired. I've had some of the best experiences by just saying yes. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> That's exactly right, man. I mean... Which, you know, you got to be careful with, but... A, a lovely person <laughs> says, I think you're far out and I would like to get down. Yeah. And you think, well... No. No. And then you, every time you, you're home alone in your little apartment by yourself mm -hmm. with your Pepsi mm -hmm. and you're thinking, fuck what I say no. <laughs> what the hell did I say no for? I should have said yes. Like every single time. Nobody ever goes, I'm so glad I said no. Right. I'm sitting here watching Law and Order SVU. <laughs> yeah, like nobody right. ever does that. Right. I mean, a couple times I've done that. Well, one is the unknown and one is the known. Now, now there have been situations where it felt like it was definitely going to be the known. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, like you would regret it. I don't ever fraternize with fans. Hmm. I love to go to breakfast. I love to go dancing. I love to go out. I love to talk. I love to exchange information. But you can't come back to my place. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Ever. Yeah. And um, unless it's the love of your life and you're really willing to chuck your career in the toilet for them, mm -hmm. um, no. Yeah. And so there's an instance where I always say no. Right. And sometimes I really want to say yes. Right. Well, it makes sense. I mean, especially when you have a lot of stuff. You're, I know my, you know, I, I have a room in a house with some roommates, but that's my space, you know, and, and I, I've been collecting this stuff. You know, equipment is expensive. Um, and, uh, you know, God forbid any of it get jacked because I would have to start all over, you know? So. Where, where do you live exactly? I live in the no, no, don't tell me. <laughs> don't tell me. I was kidding. I love that you started to tell me where you yeah, live. Yeah, yeah. Don't do that. Um, I, um, I'm with you. Totally, yeah. uh, but and the, it, it really, to say yes is to it, is to be willing to look at something mm -hmm. and to talk about it and right. to explore it. Like, and you know, I mean, sometimes everything that you thought or everything that you were afraid of uh, turns out to be true. Yeah, right. For example, mm -hmm. in your Iraq, there is currently a sort of a renaissance of digital modules. Mm, yeah. I think I've spent a couple of thousand dollars exploring digital modules. Mm -hmm. My initial thought about digital modules for your Iraq was that I don't like digital modules and I don't have any interest in them. They mm. suck. Mm. And um, 
a couple of thousand dollars and many modules later, I don't care for digital modules. Interesting. And that information is now not contempt prior to any exploration or uh, acquisition. Hmm. It's my experience, and there's just something about the way it sounds that doesn't do it for me. Interesting. However, yeah. there are many people that I admire and love that really love their digital modules, and I don't think less of them as artists. Right. It's like if a painter wants to paint with yellow, let them. Right. Just make or acrylic with yeah. oil. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, acrylic. Oh, exactly. It dries so fast. <laughs> There's got to be a way where we can validate one another and we can support each other and we can get mm-hmm. down without being snowflakes, yeah. without lying to each other. Right. Because there's a certain amount of like, oh, good job. Yeah. That was really great, Scott. I loved your set yeah. when I didn't dance and I wasn't here. But it was all digital. Yeah, it was sucked. It was, <laughs> right? You know, it's like you don't, you fucking, like, to tell the truth, like, everybody's afraid to say, I dig your music. Yes, Right. Everybody's afraid to say, like, if I go to New York, mm-hmm. people are sweaty, covered in glitter, yeah. and, and they don't know who I am. They can't believe that I just did that. Right. I actually did it, yeah. and they don't know what to do, so they want to give me their hat, mm-hmm. or they want to have sex with me, or they want to mm-hmm. tip me to keep playing. They just love me, and they don't mind thing. saying they love me. Play at home, people are just like, you pretty much feel like everybody hates you. And yeah. then they're like, oh my God, I fucking love you. And you're like, well, would you tell me that? <laughs> right. People would tell each other. Yeah. Like, there's no, like, yeah. I don't want to seem like a fan. Right, right. I don't, want, a, you to very th- weird I don't want you to think I like you. Yeah, it's very weird. It's, it's, uh, I wonder if people yeah. in New York feel that way about each other. I bet they don't. Probably, I bet I they don't. don't. I don't know. I mean, but San Franciscans feel about that way, about each other sometimes, you know? Again, there are only eight of us. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> None of us like each other. Yeah. Mission yeah. high is brutal, man. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what do you think? Uh, what, I mean, is it all digital is off the, off the table? You know, because you have like a digital sampler, no. right? Digital, no, not digital all di- samplers. Digital is not off the table. But see, a digital sampler is like the analog to... A computer that you would use to sample, right? I think digital is useful for no analog LFO, for modulation, for control source, for sequencing, for all mm. sorts of things. Yeah, it's yeah. great for sampling. Yeah. I mean, digital is great because it's stable. Yes. Very stable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Uh, I just, for me personally, the sound. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah, I, I like the digital Roland boutiques. Yeah. They right. sound great. Yeah. So it's kind of a case by case basis. It really depends on what you're trying to do with it. I mean, it's hard because for me, my composition is often rooted in the idea of a low end is mm. the bed for mm-hmm. the rest of the music. Yeah. And so I will set an analog low end mm-hmm. with a pretty sturdy kick drum in there. Yeah. Um, regardless of the tempo, regardless of the rhythm, that's just basically something that really does it for me. Right. And then when I want to send sort of a more sort of romantic or possibly a bittersweet sort of feeling through it, mm. um, if I take an analog synthesizer like the OB6 and play a seventh chord, mm-hmm. it's going to crowd the whole thing out. It's uh, not going to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that would be a better composition on the OB6 if I played the chord with then my left hand playing the bass, and we did it all with the OB6. Yeah. That would be totally credible. That would totally work. Yeah. But if I'm going to take the SH-101 and go mm-hmm. in the low end and expect to hit anything in the horns... Right. I'm going to need something that's digital. You're eating up headroom. Because I want to, you want to move things across through the spectrum. And yes. EQ helps. Yeah. Compression and limiting can help. Mm-hmm. Um, Playing higher up on the, 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 the key range. Sure. Yeah. Jumping up an octave. But yeah. sometimes, sometimes mud is where the feeling is, yeah, you know? Yeah, right. And so I'm feeling like the sound system, don't, don't try this at home, but I think that sometimes I'm feeling like the sound system is an instrument too. Oh, absolutely. I mean, yeah. that's, that's really yeah. challenging if you don't have any headroom. Yeah. It's especially challenging in a room full of compression versus limiting. Hmm. I know people don't really love limiters. People are happier with compressors, but hmm. I don't think I've ever met a band hmm. unless the individual instrument is being compressed. So a guitar in a compressor yeah. is a great effect. Right. But everybody knows that if you're compressing the voice and they're singing their fucking guts out Mm -hmm. and then you stop, what happens to the sound of the voice? You get feedback immediately Mm -hmm. because the volume goes way up. Yes. And so that's a bad idea. So if you're playing the room as an instrument and it's all compressed as soon as you break down, 
<laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> like it's a nightmare. So yeah. you, you need to know like the different ways you need to, you should be really kind and pleasant and thoughtful with sound people. Yes. And trust yeah. them. Yeah. They're not dumb. They're not trying to make you sound bad. I appreciate that. Well, <laughs> it's easy to feel like, you know, when the sound guy's like, you got to roll back sure, at yeah. 90 hertz a little bit, please. Right. And trust your sound guy. That's where your kick drum is, yeah. dude. That's where your bass drum is. No, I want to fucking turn it up there. Right. And so this asshole's trying to make me sound shitty. Yeah. Like, I completely understand that that's sort of innate response. Yeah. It's yeah. not true. Yeah. Sound people know. And the people standing out listening to the speakers on the other side right. going, oh, my God, the oh. treble is way too high. <laughs> like... Though they don't hate you. They're not trying to hurt yeah. you. They're telling you that the treble is way too high. I remember I had a, a mastering uh, engineer one time tell me, oh, you might want to take that white noise blast down a little bit because it's just going to tear people's heads off in a nightclub. And I was like, yeah, okay. All right. <laughs> I like that. I like, I like making sounds that really yeah. only work in nightclubs. Yeah. It makes me really happy. Yeah, absolutely. I've been digging the kind of... Um, what are some examples? mid-range analog sound to get a full frequency. Hmm. Go listen to my album, which you can get on, on Bandcamp now. Home? Home. Yeah, I, I heard it earlier. It's, it's great. It's fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's a full frequency analog recording, and the idea is that, is that it's all there. Mm -hmm. So if you take that into a nightclub, those bass lines are just going to stomp your face. <laughs> it's going to be a different sound in sure. a capable sound system yes. versus at home you'll be able to listen to it and enjoy it and dance around in your underpants and this is great. Right. right. But I mean, the thing is, is that, is that I love that something that goes in my studio monitors goes in your living room yeah. and goes in the nightclub. <laughs> and it's even more fun than making those recordings is actually doing that. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, a, it's an interesting thing too, making your music and, and, play, and, and listening to it on sound systems. You know, I was uh, telling a buddy that, you know, I uh, have worked a bit with uh, the Function One stuff, um, and I like Function One. Um, I thought I liked it a lot more than I actually do. Really? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I kind of uh, just subscribed to the, the popularity. You know, they look great, you know, and I mean, they do sound good. They're very bassy. That was what you, you played on the day at the Midway. They have all Function One stuff, and it is. It is great stuff, but, uh, and I'm not saying this just, you know, because I'm biased because I work here, but... When I played my stuff on the Function One stuff, it, it what it seemed to do is, it my own music didn't sound correct. Like it was splitting, like the crossovers were were splitting my music in an unnatural way, you know. And it just didn't quite sound right. Whereas it sounded good on my monitors. So I brought a song here that I just did and uh, played it, you know, right here, and it was so even. It, was, it wasn't even fully mixed. It wasn't even fully mastered. I just slapped a limiter on it. And this system made it sound better than it did. It's raining really hard. Is that rain? Sounds great. Yeah, that's awesome. I love it. What, uh, what sound system is this in here? This is uh, the Pioneer. A Pioneer sound system. Yeah. Here at Halcyon in San Francisco. Which is amazing. It's, okay. it, it's the underdog system. A bigger company. I think. Well, I don't know. If no, Yorkville is the underdog system. Is it really? Never buy a Yorkville sound system. Oh. Never. Okay. They will, the sound guy will always tell you yeah. and take two hours to explain to you why yeah. it's every bit as good as a turbo rig. Right. It's not. It's not, no. Never sounds good. Really? Mm -mm. Sounds great if you're playing a CD. Sounds fantastic, hmm. but don't, don't you dare play a live set in it. Interesting. <laughs> How do you feel about Danley? You like Danley stuff? Love Danley. Danley's great. I'm surprised by Danley. It's Me like too. a wet washcloth to the face. Yes. I like Danley so much. <laughs> really good. Really weird looking speakers. <clears throat> yeah. They don't make any sense. You know, uh, they, they have tiny Joe, holes that the bass is coming through. That's right. Makes no sense. The, but it works. The guys from uh, Dance Classique in San Diego, my boys Joe P, and uh, they're, they do Danley. And oh my God. It's so good. It's fantastic. It was the best time on that <laughs> yeah. sound system. It's so good. Well, so, I mean, you know, I don't know if you have any of your music with you, but uh, we can check this system out, you know, before you leave. I'd love to hear it. I love it. I, I think it's one of my personal favorites just because... But that's the thing, like, you know, Dig, if I, well, I just talk yeah. shit about Yorkville. If Yorkville made a sound system that didn't sound like it had a rag in the mm -hmm. mid-range, mm -hmm. I would love Yorkville, and I would tell yeah. everybody, because Yorkville don't pay me. Right. I don't care. Right. I'm, I want you to know that Yorkville is terrible. Yeah. Don't buy it. Right. <laughs> um, turbo sound. Um, 
Function One, <laughs> highly rated, well loved. I was the first person to drag a Purple Turbo sound system all across North America from Total Audio in Canada. I rented it from them. They're amazing heroes. They put my shit on the map. We went places like can like in Kansas yeah. in a cornfield. We set that shit up and just scared people for miles. <laughs> like it was so fun outdoors. A turbo sound system is amazing, but mm. Mm. when you get to know it. The digital processing in the middle, you don't get a full frequency response. Yeah. You get a long throw sub that's yes. pretty unmusical. Yeah. And yeah. you get a really, really bright, beautiful, almost stadium grade high end. Right. Well, that's what, that's what, it's reminiscent of uh, the system that you played on for the day party outside. Function yeah. one is very similar in that regard. Yeah. But function one, I think I've made a lot of improvements. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter like Space Lab Yellow in Tokyo, mm -hmm. I believe, is a the biggest function, or was the biggest function one sound system on Earth. Right. And it was, it's, it's insane how good it is. Really? It, you just, like, you don't ever want to leave. Holy cow. It doesn't matter whether you're on the first floor, the second floor, or the third floor. <laughs> you're just like, I'm never leaving. This yeah. is heaven. And then um, the long system, the system that was at Love in New York. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, is that Richard Long? Oh, my God. I don't think I've ever heard a sound system better than that. Really? Like, it, okay, a 20-year-old 12-inch copy of Voodoo Ray. Mm. It's a great song. But if you think about the production quality of the S1000 sampler and the late 80s, yeah, you know, wow. Like, you could hear the limitations. You could hear. It was just so beautiful. You could hear the crunchy uh, production. Everything. Wow. And so you mix in like a disco record into that yeah. and it sounds like a band started playing along with it Holy like it's cow. a sound system for DJs like Harvey yeah. and Mark Farina yeah, with yeah. vinyl we just had Mark Farina here you don't, don't you love him fantastic he's just not only is he like a night. genius yeah. but he's just a sweetheart yeah I, I sadly didn't get to talk to him that much he, he just he's well, kind of bashful the, they, well the headliners show up with, with you know they show up at midnight and they just hop up here and do their thing some of them some of them. Book yeah. me, kid. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll dance all night. <laughs> all right. Um, I won't. I won't. No. I'll show up at midnight and be like, yeah. you know, you didn't Who get my you? rider right. I'm yeah, leaving. Because yeah. um, that's my steez, you yeah. know. That's the way I roll. Exactly. Um, I talk about love, but act like a bitch. You're right. <laughs> um, that's not true. I don't do that. Um, but sometimes you're tired. Sometimes when you're on the road. Oh, yeah. It yeah. beats Imagine. the fucking shit out of you, and it's really hard. You can't show up. Mm -hmm. But I take a tip from people like Doc Martin. Yeah, Doc Martin's my fucking hero. We've been right. friends since we were kids, wow. and that guy, that guy's in it to win it. He shows yeah. up early not to be cool. He no. shows up early because no. he wants to be there. Yeah. He wants to hear the music. He's a stud. Yeah, and um, taught me everything I know. That's great. Just no ego. I love those guys that have been doing it forever. Just no ego. Just loves the music. That's what they're in it for. You yeah. know. Yeah. Well, it's about the music. It is. And that seems like hokey nonsense because a lot of people say it's about the music and it's not about the music for them. It's about right. them. Yeah. And like, I don't know why. Why does that win? Why are there so many people that... It feeds the ego. Like, I mean, it takes a kind of... You have to be a bit of a sociopath. Mm -hmm. A little bit of a narcissistic borderline personality disorder to even want to like, I'm not going to work a job. Yeah. Fuck security. I'm going to be an artist. Like yeah. you have to be a little bit, or are you dumb? Yeah. But yeah. I don't, but none of the people I know in the music business or in the arts are dumb. Right. I mean, I think it's something else. Like mm. I have to. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't think, fuck it. No. I don't care. <laughs> I, I don't, I can't help it. Yeah. No, I'm the same way. I mean, I think for me, I, you know, I, I was kind of the, uh, my, you know, I was the ADD poster child as a kid. <laughs> so <laughs> I was always being told I wasn't good enough. So now I'm, now I'm like an overachiever. Right. You know, but, are, it, but are you a perfectionist? Yes. And I have to dial it back. Okay. I have to, I have to keep it in check because I won't get songs done. Get messy, baby. Yeah. That's what I'm doing. Good. Yeah. And I've, I've gotten really good about it. Good. Yeah. Perfectionism yeah. is a state of fear. And it fuck is. fear. Fear can't win. Yeah. Right. Like hate can't win. Right. It seems to win. Yeah. Like the dick with the money. Yeah. Everybody goes, oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Fuck you. You yeah, know what I mean? Right. You know what I mean? Like, no, just fuck you and take your synthesizer and get out of here. Like, <laughs> fuck you. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like love has to win, right? Yes. Everybody gets a turn. Right. 
And it's tough too because on the other side of the coin, like you're trying to make a living, I'm trying to make a living, yeah. and everybody loves me. I love you. I'm, I love you so much that I stole your song mm. and I sampled it into another record, <laughs> and I didn't credit you. That's right. They didn't even say thank you in the credits of the liner notes for the song. No. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Yeah. That's how much so I love you. I love you. I've always been such a big fan. Right. And then the other one, the other one is, I love you so much that I am going to offer to pay you one quarter of your fee. Mm, that's so thoughtful. That's tough. That's that's not as hard as you're a dick because you stole my song. Yeah. It's more like um, I want to play that show. I want to go right. where the love is. In yeah. fact, I made a decision. I don't take bookings mm. where I'm not wanted. Oh. So I only go where the love is. That's great. So if you have heard me and you would like me to come and play, yeah. I will. Yeah. And we will work it out. Yes. Um, and I know it, it just sucks that the people with the money want to pay me a quarter of my fee mm. and the people who I know have no money right. know what my fee is and offer it to me. Right. It should be the other way around. Well, it's like they, they always say, you know, the people that, that are wealthy got that way because they were pinching the whole way. You know, my dad had some money. Yeah. <laughs> it's not the case. Or, or not for him anyway. He's the cheapest dude I ever <laughs> met in my life. But, but the, and, I, and, and I'm not really much of a, I mean, I'm, I'm, no, I'm really generous. Yeah. Um, but I think that, um, I, I think being an artist kind of humbles you in a lot of ways to where you can't not be. Sure, there's some people that are, you know, artists and maybe self righteous assholes, you know, but the, the self, introspection the constant self introspection and combing over of your own thoughts and your own creations and your own you know uh emotions that get dumped out onto these these frequencies these sounds that you create you know i mean if if you're really in it and you're really actually listening and, and analyzing it can't not crush your ego a little bit which is why you might have a tough time you know when someone wants to pay you a quarter of your fee saying, hey, you know, I mean, I, you want to be there, you know, but you also know I have this fee for a reason, you know, and people always try to undercut you. Not always, but some people try to undercut you. That's what I meant by it's tough. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to make those calls. It's hard to make those decisions. It's hard mm -hmm. to speak up for yourself. It's hard to stick up for yourself. It's hard to compromise. Right. I mean, that's hard all the time. Yeah. And then when it comes to this stuff that's like deeply rooted in what you're talking about, like the mm. agony of wrenching this stuff up out of yourself, packing up your studio and putting it on an airplane and flying somewhere or just driving across town. Right. I mean, that's tough. Yeah. And so it has to be about something more than money. It has to be about something more than fee or status or credibility. Mm. It has to be about like, I mean, I want to change the world. I've felt that way all my life. Right. And so whatever the world shifts toward, like when we had a, 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 a beautiful uh, president that I admired, um, I felt like we weren't nearly liberal enough. Hmm. We weren't doing enough for the people. Yeah. We weren't being as honest as we could be with each other. And so I was railing against this self-satisfied idea that we were liberal and it was free and we were snowflakes. And I was just railing against that idea because we, we did, you know, I've never seen an elected politician that reflected my values, not yeah. ever, not once. Yeah. And so the idea is that instead of being mad and bitchy mm. about it, challenge people to think for themselves, ask mm. really good slapping questions. Yeah, right. And then when the world says, okay, well, maybe electronic music doesn't suck, then what do you do? That's the world going, yes. So do you jump forward and go, da, 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 da. You know, no, I grabbed my grandfather's acoustic guitar and started looping it. <laughs> yeah, I'm just antagonistic naturally. And so yeah. the idea is that, is that if you're going to push, mm. if that's that sort of resistance, and, and I think that some of that may come from the idea of, as an electronic musician or as a, a DJ or somebody that's part of underground music, mm -hmm. I don't, I've never really found myself in a position where I could play something sentimental. Hmm. You take the drums out for the whole song oh, and yeah. sing something from the bottom of your heart. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> people actually, as soon as you take the beat, I'll go, drop the beat, drop the beat, drop the beat. This is no way you're going to be able to right. sing. You know, you're not going to, I mean, I've come pretty close yeah. to having real like sort of tearjerker moments with audiences, yeah. but, but it's, there's, there are rules and there's mm -hmm. a challenge and mm -hmm. it's like, we don't really have, um, 
an open format. Yeah. We're not, not like completely. a... Right. Yeah. And so I think that to challenge ourselves, to push ourselves, to push each other, to even compete with one another, I mean, it depends on how you're made. Mm -hmm. It depends on what, where you're coming from. I mean, some people um, are coming from a sort of an athletic point of view. Hmm. It's a competition. Yeah. Sportsmanship, that sort of thing. Right. So even saying you suck or your synthesizer sucks doesn't mean they actually think you suck. It's a challenge to see how you respond. Yeah, right. Because if you cry because I said your synthesizer is stupid, I win. Yeah. Right? It's a debate. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think that way. I don't operate that way. Right. I don't challenge people in that way because yes. I feel like we've been put down and repressed and divided and totally conquered mm -hmm. and beaten. Yeah. And so I don't think there's anything that's gonna good that's going to come right. from capping on each other. Yeah. I really feel like the only good's going to come from being really courageous and as punk rock as possible and tell each other how much we respect and admire and love each other. Right. And ask people questions like, why are you putting everybody, like, how the fuck did you realize, what did you say about the Subaru? You said I just, <laughs> st I got tired of it. What did you say? No, I just, I, I, was, I was unhappy with, with where my life was at the moment. And right. so I would get online and it, and it turned, the, the online form turned into, you know, I was sitting there pumped up full of caffeine and you know, I was drinking red free coffee and sitting there, you know, talking to people online and, you know, the whole, the whole thing, it's, 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 it's not a conversation like, like we're having. It's someone posts something, you read it, you think about it, you type out a response and something in there makes it t team A, team B. Yes. Right. And then, and then you are, however you're feeling subconsciously or consciously kind of comes to the surface whether you want it to or not mm. and it bubbles up for better or for worse I think I remember in my 20s throwing parties that were really successful mm. and um, feeling like if people thought it was a good idea to book like a trance DJ mm. at one of my parties and there was a woman who was really advocating that really felt very strongly what we needed was some trance mm. I remember feeling like her really liking trance meant something negative about my party and mm. the music that I played. Yeah. And so I actually felt inside like I didn't like her anymore. Hmm. And I didn't want to have anything to do with her because what she was saying about what she liked, like it, it, it never occurred to me that this lovely woman could really like me and really love my party, and also really like trance. There wasn't any sort of possible equation where that was the case, or even likely. Right. It had to be either you like my party, or you like trance. Right. Because there was no confusion. I absolutely did not play trance, or yeah. any variety of trance. So, like, I think that that's just, I was um, sophomoric. Hmm. I think that's sort of a, a sort of a young ego. Yeah. Like I don't feel secure enough in myself. I can't even believe that anybody's even coming to my party like at all. <laughs> right. So the idea that now on top of this totally unlikely, almost accidental success that I can't even account for, hmm. you're saying we should have trance. Yeah. And so like, ah, like short circuit, get away from me. And I think that's just young. Yeah. I, I, I really do think it's just, it's fear and it's young. Like it challenged your, your party planning uh that's way ability. too sophisticated too sophisticated i think it, it just, just threatened my ego oh okay interesting <laughs> and i don't even think i had the, the the words i don't think i had the words to say yeah boy that's a threat to my ego i'd better <laughs> work even, through that like I, not at, not at all it yeah. was just like yeah. i don't like that chick right like that was actually my response yeah. and i've regretted that forever yeah because i think and it didn't stop me from doing it again <laughs> like I, I really think like it's like it's something you have to get past yeah you have to realize that like i think about it like do you only, what, how would you classify the music that you make? Well, um, it's kind of, it's tough. It's, uh, it's, I guess, well, I make, I make two genres. Uh, I make a uh, future bass and then kind of a tech house. house Interesting. And you can mix those together using that cool technique. I could. Far out. It would be, it would be very difficult for the audience. So I, now, but it's this idea that future bass and mm -hmm. tech house then are the only kinds of music in the world. Right. Yeah. So if Tchaikovsky's playing, he sucks. Yeah. It fucking sucks. Tchaikovsky sucks. Right. 
Right, unless you could sample it and put it in some future bass, right? Right. Then that would be sick. Yeah. Right, so like... <laughs> it is very sophomoric. Uh, in that's nature, yeah. super sophomoric in yeah. the sense that, like, I mean, you can appreciate people for all sorts of reasons. Right. Like I, I think Tom Waits is amazing. Yeah. Does that make me an idiot? Right. <laughs> right. Should I leave? <laughs> no. 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 Like, uh, there's all kinds of amazing music yeah. in the world. There's, there's, there's music that I absolutely deplore, and I don't... I don't hate the musicians, and I, in fact, I give them respect because they have captured an audience of such great magnitude that they have done something that I can't do, and they've done something very impressive. I still deplore the music. It's terrible music. They're virtuosos. Yeah. They're they, so they found an audience. Amazing at what they do. Of millions of people. Yeah. Yeah. But do you want an audience of millions of people? I think it'd be cool. Really? Yeah. So if it got there, I, I think what you mean is the same thing I mean. Is that I would like an audience of millions of people. I really would. I would like the, uh, the most amount of people to be able to hear my music. And I would like yeah. to not compromise what moves me. Yes. At all. Yes, that's the goal. So the millions of people would be cheering because I was playing, running with headhunters. Exactly what you wanted to play. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Like yeah. at the MoMA, you know. Right. And, and, yeah. <laughs> and, and I had a, 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 a huge band with me, and it was all happening. Like, right. Like really amazing. Yeah. yeah. And it just sold out. Right. <laughs> totally. <laughs> absolutely completely sold out. Like a line down the block and the news crew across the street. Absolutely. And there it is. Yeah. Doom, 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 yeah. doom. And I'm like, hey, come on, everybody get up. Like, you know, like no, yeah. no compromise. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But to have an audience of millions of people, you need mm. to have funny makeup. Mm. Um, you need to show your boobs. You yeah. need a sex tape. Right. You're going to need a press agent. Yeah, you need a mask. Yeah, of some a, sort. A mask of some. Well, yeah. see, that's even like, how could you really be that famous if you yeah. had a mask? Right. We want to see that you're young and cute. It is all about the sex tape. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine? I need some boobs. You need boobs. I need boobs. <laughs> <laughs> you need boobs. I need a sex tape. Yeah, there we go. Um, <laughs> well, either way you want to do that's fine. Yeah, yeah. Um, There's someone in San Francisco. I have a hairy chest, so <laughs> I should take, do the sex tape. Yeah, there you go. Hairy chest boobs? What do you think? A strange look. We've gone in a weird direction. Someone's done it. <laughs> my point. My my. my so you can think it. It's on the internet. <laughs> my my point being is, is 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 that is that millions of people means millions of people have agreed that if this were playing at a TJI Fridays on Wednesday at eight, mm. it would be cute with your beer. Right. It's like uh, the hotel lobby. Mm. Have you ever heard a house track you loved in a hotel lobby? Ooh. I mean, they play one of my songs at Legoland. Did they really? Yeah, no, no they do. Oh, they do. I get videos all the time from people like, "Dude, oh, I'm yeah. at Legoland. Check this out." And there's a video of one of my songs playing at Legoland. That's incredible. How do I, you feel about it? I feel thrilled. I feel honored. I feel delighted, yeah. and I feel ashamed. <laughs> all at the same time. Yeah, all at the same time. <laughs> I'm sure that's how Avicii play, felt when they played his uh, music in, in the hotel lobby in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's like it's like mass appeal means um, either you've tapped into something that just a massive number of people connect with. Yeah. Well, We're, you can't, you can't, I mean, the further you get away from niche, you know, it's like when you take pizza dough and you, you make the biggest pizza you can, the, the pizza dough is going to be razor thin. You know what I mean? It'll be good though. Yeah. You know, if you use enough olive good. oil, that'll be I great. Like thin, yeah, I like thin too. crust. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, I like if you were to take that pizza crust and, and, and cover the entire world, going to be the thinnest pizza crust ever i mean you just your 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 music is being sp spread everywhere but then consider a song like heroes by bowie hmm. you know that song yeah that's a masterpiece it is uh, right. it's an absolute fucking intimate vulnerable right painful f epic masterpiece right how did that happen how did david bowie happen at all how right. did prince happen yeah like think about it. michael jackson rick astley <laughs> I know how Rick Astley happened. You know, what it was was that he'd known those, whoever he was talking to for a long time. Yeah. Um, and they knew the truth, and so did he. Hmm. This is the lyrics. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, I, I, I don't think that it, it uh, discredits the music. I don't think that it, it takes anything away from it. But when something is so wide, it's just like the hipsters that are like, oh, I liked Bowie before he was big. You know, like that's that whole mentality. Back in 65, Back in 65 when he sucked. Right. Right. And thing like this. Yeah. Exactly right. No, yeah. you didn't like Bowie. Nobody liked Bowie then. Right. But you know what I mean? Like, it doesn't, the music is no worse because it's the same music that 
that came out of the studio when when there was ten people listening versus <clears throat> maybe for an overnight success and there's millions of people listening. It's the same music, literally the same music. But well, that's what I, I'm, I'm saying. It's one thing to think that, um, like, so off the wall. Mm. If th- when the ride and hi hat start working together in that middle eight, and yeah. he says, "When the groove is dead and gone," and then he right. goes, yeah, "Yeah, right," and love survives and will rock forever. Right, uh, rock with you. Yeah, fuck. Yeah, like fuck. Okay, I'm an underground, independent dance music loving weirdo right that song gives me goosebumps right that song makes me cry I have cried yeah. as an adult man yeah in a warehouse right <laughs> well I played that record wow so I'm behind the turntables playing that yeah. record and because the sheer volume of people that are connecting with it right and we all have our hand in the air yeah and we want to rock with you. We want right. to. We want to rock with you. We want to roll with you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We want to rock. Right. Well, there, there's some. There's some music too. Like that's like, amazing. Like, like the Pink Floyds of the world. Dude, like, Pink Floyd. What they, the fuck? Yeah. What the hell was wrong with them? That was right. amazing. Yeah. And nothing. Nothing is lost. I mean, they're still so highly coveted, and the entire world is in, is in love with their stuff. Exactly. Know? But there's something about the voice. Yeah. That connects with people, and some of it <clears throat> is the familiarity of, like you know. Pink Floyd is sort of like the Pink Floyd story as it relates to EDM. Mm. So your friend takes you to a rave and you take a pill Mm. and you go, (laughs) and you don't remember any of the music, right? right. So you get the 45, right, of another brick in the wall. Mm -hmm. You hear that we don't need no education. Oh my God, that's not great. And then your girlfriend, right, Mm. loves the song Wish You Were Here. Mm. And those are the only two Pink Floyd songs that you know. Right. And then your mom likes money. Yeah. Is the gas, right? right? And then you're like, holy shit. So now you know three Pink Floyd songs. And then yeah. one day you smoke a bowl and you listen to Dark Side of the Moon. Mm. And your roommate is like, dude, 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 start it <laughs> over. Let's watch The Wizard of Oz from the beginning. And you watch The Wizard of Oz. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> and you listen to Dark Side of the Moon. Yeah. And your mind is blown and your life has changed. Right. Now this pop monster rock band mm. is part of your subculture because you discovered it yourself yes yeah it's real for you right and um i'm not sure if anybody thought that pink floyd was bubblegum or garbage we, the 70s were an interesting time because mm-hmm. their fm radio was like a renegade indie thing really and rolling stone was like a college student written sort of renegade countercultural magazine oh wow it hadn't become like mainstream mm. But there were so many young people and so many people in their 20s and 30s that were paying attention. Right. That, um, that made it a, a, a sort of a, a tour de force. It b- brought a lot of money to the table, which then sort of shaped the 80s. Interesting. And then it became mainstream. Yeah. And I think that, you know, there's good stuff to be said about that. You could also sort of go and call them sellouts. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Like, would you want to... Would you want to... Um, Make a chain of Halcyon and build a Halcyon in every major city in, in the world? I mean, some people consider selling out uh, being able to survive off your music, you know, or, or, or taking, you know, I mean, that's, that's, that's what it is. You, you know, know, people like, that think starving mm-hmm. and having nothing and being a homeless guy mm. is the truth. Right. And making some money means that you suck are people that don't no. have to worry about paying their rent. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, I mean, because it doesn't, they don't, they don't. They, they, they can't exist in the same world. That's the you can't be homeless and also have equipment. In the, you know what I mean? I, I did know a guy that had nothing but a laptop, and he was very vagrant, and he would just, uh, you know, uh, travel around the world, and, and you know, uh, just all he had was his MacBook, and he would make music, and he'd come up to you and be like, check it out, and he didn't have studio monitors. He'd just hold his MacBook up to your ear, you know, which is, which is cool, but I also don't think that it's conducive. I would love to be bohemian. Yeah, I mean, in the sense that, like, the Bohemians were the Victorians; they were the rich kids, right? And they didn't choose vocation, and they didn't choose marriage. Mm. They chose to go abroad and study art, right? And um, that would be amazing to be Bohemian. Can you imagine yeah. not having to worry about money just to enculturate and enrich yourself, sort of spiritually? Just wherever the wind takes you. Far fucking out, man! Yeah. I want, I want to, let's <laughs> yeah. do that. I mean, I can't say that that my take on that would be. Um, 
bourgeois. Mm. I don't think it would be um, empty. Right. But maybe it would be. I don't know. I never really had anything, so I have no yeah. idea. I wonder what it, what it would be like, uh, how my creative process would work. Because and, and I, 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 so much of me is... is, is you know, I always tell people all I need is this. I made this, you know, studio desk with rack mount stuff, and it's got my computer monitors and my studio monitors and all my rack. It's all I need, you know. Like I, I've downsized to the point where I'm just I have this room. It's just my bed and that, and that's I'm, that's all I need, you know. But sometimes I'm like, could I do without that? I don't know. It's scary. It's scary to think about because it's so much. I wake up, I have my tea. It's it's. I'm very kind of. I have this, you know. Uh, your stuff is set up and ready to get into? Yes. Yeah. I don't, and I don't work that way anymore. No, really? I put everything away. Interesting. All my cables are hung. All my equipment oh. is cleaned and put away. And I have a, two white tables yeah. that are next to each other, standing tables. Right. And I keep them super clean. That's awesome. And then when I, every day, yeah. I look at my wall of equipment and I wonder what I want to work with and what thing I'm thinking about. See, that's where I'd like to go next. Because currently everything is set up and sitting in its exact spot because I, that's all, I, all the room I have. I didn't make any music when I did that. Yeah, I, I know. I don't think I've ever been I, so I've, depressed as when I had a studio set up. Well, so what it, what it means that I don't do is I don't get creative plugging things in. And I don't say, oh, I've got my Poly Evolver and I'm just going to plug it into this, this whatever. That's because right. because I, I, it means I have to... I have to reach back and plug this in. I have to wire the cable around my desk, you know, and all the, or it has to just or be it's already the plugged room. in and it doesn't work like that. So never mind. Exactly. Right. Exactly. So it's like, well, that's really set up. That's kind of an old school setup for a computer to be the centerpiece. Yeah. I was just talking to um, a friend of mine about that, and we were talking about how um, don't use a computer at all. Mm. I literally put my computer away. That's, so that's something I would like to have is once I have a little bit more room, I want to have a setup that's just an old school sampler, a two track tape, or maybe a four track tape thing. Well, the just, computer could be your tape jack. That works just fine. And sure. I think that's what my friend and I were talking about is he had yeah. the computer set up. Yeah. And cause the idea is he wants to record everything he does. Mm -hmm. And that's brilliant. That's genius. I mean, I should record everything that I do and I don't. That's basically how my setup is. Everything is routed so that at any given time, any sound that I can make is captured by my audio interface. Okay, and my computer all right, all right. is one big tape. You're like the third person today to say <laughs> that's a good idea. I'm, I'm going to open my mind and think about that, but yeah. for my, at least just my creative process. Yeah, I would never push it on anybody because it's all the only thing I've, I, I've come to. Dude, if, like I'm really hung up because this is being recorded. <laughs> Yeah. Like all the funny haha -ha that it's just, I'm nervous. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's what's going on. And so right. I don't want to record anything. If yeah. I see like that box right there with the red light on it, yeah. like uh, I show up and I'm going to play, just intuitively, I press the red button, I turn it off. Yeah. And because, oh my God, what happened to the recording? I'm like, I don't know. You do okay. so well with, the, with everything <laughs> recorded. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah. Um, and so for me, in terms of my process, it has to be about um, something bigger than me. Mm. I'm mm. interested in all sorts of things and right. I'm really interested in the relationships. Yes. It's really all about the relationships. And so each day mm. I may do the same, I may explore the same relationship that I was exploring last night or yesterday or the day before. It may go on and on and on until I've exhausted it. But each day I try something new. It's a good metaphor for life. Well, is it? Oh. <laughs> Maybe an ideal for living. Yes. Something yeah, to reach go. for. Yeah. I think that, um, like, Today, I've been thinking so much about the past mm -hmm. and how to bring that into the future. We, I, I mentioned it a little bit earlier, but like, for example, the Korg Monopoly is one of my favorite synthesizers. And the way that its oscillators rotate when you use the arpeggiator in mm -hmm. poly mode, mm -hmm. each time a voice sounds, it uses a different oscillator. Oh, interesting. So it becomes really fun yeah. to play like a three note chord yeah. with all four oscillators on. Holy cow. Because then what happens is it begins to rotate, switch one of them up an octave, switch another one into pulse width modulation mode. Yeah. You start getting this really interesting thing going on. Wow. Now, today I thought, I have the Shifty by IntelliGel. Mm -hmm. It's an analog shift register. I should be able to do this with the Shifty. Right. So I made, a, one, I said, let's just make one dumb subtractive synth voice. And I did. And I programmed one dumb arpeggiate da 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 yeah. into my sequencer, and so it, there it is going da 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 da. And then I thought, okay, now program the second voice, program mm -hmm. the third voice, program the fourth voice, and switch it into the mode. Now each note coming out of the sequencer 
is a different voice. Oh, yeah. And so I managed to do exactly what I Almost do. Almost like you had four monosynths or something. Right. Yeah. And then, but we're playing with one controller. Yeah. And then what I did was I started to pan them. And so I have, now I have four voices. Right. And one's coming out left. The second voice is coming out right. The third voice is coming out left. The fourth voice is coming out right. And I thought, well, what if the fourth voice came out in the middle? So now I have center, left, yeah. right, left. And then I turned, I actually ended up turning the fourth voice off. Hmm. So it didn't make any sound. Yeah. So it went note, note, skip, skip note, 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 note. Yeah. yeah. And arrest. I just, and I put a little reverb on it. Yeah. And I just sat on the floor in my studio <laughs> with like tears in my eyes. And my, my, my mouth got dry from my mouth being open. And I was just like, <laughs> What the fuck is this? Like, I just made the most beautiful thing. And it yeah. was just because I wondered right. if it was possible to accomplish what the Monopoly does just effortlessly yeah. with my Euro rack. Right. And the answer is yes. Exploration. Yes. I yeah. d- and I did not film it nor put it on Instagram. Right. I just did it. It was for me. Right. But with any hopes, that makes it on an album <laughs> and people are mystified by how you created this amazing thing, you know. I, w- I was thinking that I would bring the, Euro, uh, the Monopoly with me. Nice. On my next tour, yeah, I want to. I think I would like to make an album centered around it. It's such a Vince Clark said it was like having four shitty synthesizers in one. <laughs> nice, and it. I don't really. I would like to talk to him someday. I never met yeah. him, but I, I. I don't understand how you could say that because the Monopoly is. It's really like a, like four MS twenties. Right. It's gorgeous. Yeah. And um, it's true that a lot of the modulation opportunities are limited. Mm. But in terms of a pure instrument, it's glorious. And yeah. the way you can relate to it, it's pretty cool. Man. And so um, I think I would like to experiment with it and show all of its glory. Yeah. Like as a polysynth, as a monosynth, as an arpeggiator, as a sequencer. Yeah. There's a lot going on there. And I think it's worthy of, of, of exploring it all the way through to the end because there's nothing <laughs> shitty about any one of those four synthesizers that's in there. It's really beautiful. Right. How flexible would you say it is? I think at a glance, it's disappointing because it doesn't work like other things. It's not really a polysynth. No, okay. If you want a polysynth, you should get a poly six. And if you love Korg, right, there are better yeah. polysynths than that. But the idea is that the poly, the monopoly is, it really is for monosynths. Mm. And uh, you can't really operate them individually. Interesting. So you have to do stuff. Like if you want to use voice two, you got to turn off voice one, three, and four. Oh, wow. Um, having the Tubatec Modi Poly MIDI retrofit, you can do more things. Hmm. And there's even more going on in it. And it makes the sequencer even better. But um, I think that um, I've just never seen anything like it. I really love it. It really blows me away. Well, you've convinced me. I'm going to start saving up. <laughs> Come on over. And, <laughs> yeah. No, they're cheap. Are they? Yeah, everybody hates them. Oh, they're wow. fucking fantastic. That's great. I love it. I love cheap synths. <laughs> are they cheap? They are. Uh, that's awesome. Well, <clears throat> I feel like we could do this forever. Uh, we could. Let's do it forever. Yes. It's, it's been an hour and 50 minutes. Really? Uh, yeah. That's why I laughed when you said we would probably talk for an hour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I think we should wrap this one up. Okay. Uh, just because I'm getting hungry. I Me think uh, our, our friends are probably getting hungry, too. Um, <laughs> I want tacos. I want tacos. Um, but yeah, let's, let's, uh, you know, it, to be continued, I would love to have you on again. You know, we can just, I Anytime. feel like we, like we just ramble for, but standing uh, invitation, come over dude, and check out my it. studio and play love. with my monopoly. Let me show you. I would love to. Cool. I would love to. It'd be amazing. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, uh, thank you to our, uh, small studio audience here. And, uh, <laughs> this has been the voice of electronic music podcast episode six with sunshine Jones. Do you have anything you want to plug? Uh, no. Your website? My website is uh, theurgencyofchange.com. Yeah. Um, you can also go and listen to my material on Bandcamp. Ugh. <laughs> Sunshine Jones at Bandcamp. Yeah. And um, then uh, you can go to my personal website, uh, sunshine-jones.com. Mm-hmm. And if you're interested in electronic music or synthesizers or building things or repairing things or restoring things, check the nonfiction section. Yeah, That's I did notice you have a lot is. of manuals and stuff and, yeah, I've and really technical stuff on there. Rewritten a bunch of things. Yeah, it's fantastic. Cool. I, I felt like the modern era of leaflets and PDFs is not really conducive for 
uh, a tactile and physical connection. Yeah. And it's really important that we have that. Right. Absolutely. I love it. Cool. Well, um, thank you all for uh, tuning in. And uh, I want to thank Gina, Rhea, Leah, everybody at Halcyon for letting us host it here. Yeah, um, and uh, we will see you guys in the next one. You can, you can check us out. On, we're on iTunes, Stitcher, Podbean, uh, Spotify, SoundCloud, uh, Instagram Live. I'm getting better at that. We're in all those places? I yeah. should have known that before we talked all this yeah. shit. Yeah, totally. Know, oh, my yeah. God. It's over. <laughs> all right, thanks, It was guys. over a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. All right, we'll see you on the next one. Bye.